Historical A.J. McClung Memorial Stadium along the banks of the Chattahoochee River for 82 years, Tuskegee and Morehouse have met in Columbus, Georgia to exchange football pleasantries in an important SIAC matchup. Morehouse Tuskegee Football Classic on Aspire coming up next. And the bands are ready to take the field for the pregame ceremonies here at A.J. McClung Stadium for the 82nd Annual Morehouse Tuskegee Classic. Not only is this a game for bragging rights, but a key game in the SIAC standings. As we take a look at the SIAC standings as they are right now, in the East, you have Albany State with a surprising 2-0 record. Morehouse is undefeated in conference play, and Tuskegee still on top at 2-0, but they're 3-2 overall. Some people think they may have some dents in their armor, but this is a key matchup in the SIAC. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm James Red, along with Tyrone Poole, two-time Super Bowl champion and Fort Valley alum. You've played in a number of classics. How important is it to raise your game for a special matchup? Uh, yes, James, and like you said, coming from the Fort Valley State, we have played in many Fountain City Classic games against Albany State. So this game here is considered the granddaddy of them all, Tuskegee and Morehouse. All right, when we take a look at the Morehouse Maroon Tigers, they're led by their quarterback, Kevon Taylor. He is number two in the conference in passing, but he can also run a little bit. Yeah, Kevon Taylor, this guy here does it all for Morehouse. If Morehouse is to have an opportunity for victory today, he is going to have to continue his dominance. He is second in passing in the SIAC. He's very good efficiently at throwing the ball, so he has to have a big day today. And for Tuskegee Golden Tigers, they're led by Hodrick Lowe. This guy has to run at a high clip in order to get Tuskegee back on the winning track. Yeah, Hodrick Lowe, catch me if you can. This guy has the speed to go the distance. He scored from 71 and 73 yards out from the line of scrimmage. So if Tuskegee wants to win today, Hydric Lowe, let's gas it up. And we'll see if he has enough gas in the tank as the Tuskegee Marching Band gets ready for pregame. And all of the fans are tailgating, having a good time because they want to see who wins bragging rights and a key SIAC win coming up next right here on the spot. Get Welcome back to a sponsored presentation of the SIAC Game of the Week, the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic. And you can see some of the dignitaries representing Tuskegee University. And at the season history, I mean the classic history, Tuskegee leads it by a resounding mount of 71 and 27. Tuskegee has won 19 of the last 23 in the last four meetings. The Golden Tigers have outscored the Maroon Tigers 166 to 36 in Tyrone. That's pretty impressive. Yes, yeah, very, very impressive. And also it's great to be here to be a part of history. Uh, this game dates all the way back to 1935. The first game ever played in the stadium was 1936, I believe. And you take a look at head coach Rich Freeman for the Maroon Tigers of Morehouse. He has his team at a three and two clip on the season. And right now they are undefeated in conference play and trying to improve that mark. But more importantly, get a elusive win against coach Willie Slater and the Tuskegee University Golden Tigers. And you see Coach Slater's 12th season at the helm, and he's 101 and 27. Yeah, I know he's not pleased with the way the team is performing, but again, the great spot about the season is quite not over. There's plenty more football to be played, so um, hopefully they get a win today. But it's always interesting to see how they, the kickers kick the ball off and they go down on kickoff. Fernando sells Demora with the kick, and he kicks it into the end zone, and Hodrick Lowe will kneel it in the end zone, and Tuskegee will take over for their first possession, and they will be led by their quarterback, Jamarcus Ezel. <clears throat> and Ezel is coming back from a leg injury that had him not at 100% uh, so far this season, but they're hoping today he is well enough in order to propel his team to a victory. 
This is a ball club that had a surprising loss to Albany State early in the season. They did get a victory against Alabama State of the FCS uh, to open the year, but they've had a couple of uh, losses, and they're trying to rebound now to try to get back on the winning track. Taylor with a throw and catch incomplete to start off their first offensive play, and that's not what you want to see from your quarterback first time out, Tyler. Uh, you know, definitely, you always want to, most teams tend to throw the, uh, run the ball, but Tuskegee, their history, they are a passing team, and it's no surprise that they come out trying to get the guy that um, they believe will have to play another major role if they are to have uh, victory today. The quarterback position has to have better play. Low is in at the running back position. And movement along the line looks like Darius Smith, a Columbus native, may have moved a little bit premature. Let's see what the official call is. They say it was offsides on Morehouse. And Rich Freeman does not like to see that at all. And they call it on uh, Trevon Baker, freshman linebacker. That's not how you want to start defensively. But that's what you call having a lot of uh, energy, uh, a lot of energy. Sometimes you kind of begin another game, first snap, you're always going to get some type of penalty in the first series. And then just like boxers, they settle down get back into the game plan, and you see less penalties going forward. Now second and five for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Ezell, pass completed to Bryson, Brinson, and he's able to get enough for a first down. You know, it's very interesting, this formation, this offense that Tuskegee runs. Uh, if you really look at it, football is played from very, probably three variations of offense. Uh, you got the West Coast, you have the run and shoot, and then you have the old air Coriel where you just air it out. And these guys basically are in a standard, basic uh, pro formation. They just have the gun, they have the quarterback and a gun, a pistol look. High snap goes over his head, ball is loose, picked up by Morehouse. Turnover for the Golden Tigers and a big turnover recovery for the Maroon Tigers of Morehouse. Big play for Trayvon Lucky, and he was lucky on that one. Uh, very lucky. And, you know, that's the thing about being in the gun. Whenever you're in the gun, the center sometimes has a tendency to snap the ball over the quarterback head, depending on if there is a uh, blitz that is about to happen. Sometimes the offensive line, they have to make their checks. So they can, it, that can put pressure on the center, which you have an air and snap like you just saw right there. And that was Kamari Hunter on the fumble recovery. Now it's time for Morehouse to take over. Kevon Taylor. And they're going to try a halfback pass. Easy touchdown, Maroon Tigers. Trick play on their first offensive score. Tamari Vanover with the touchdown reception. And the Maroon Tigers put six on the board early. If you're going to do, if you're going to score on a, any time on a sudden, sudden change, uh, whether it's at the 50-yard line or it's in the red zone, that is the time if you're going to throw the ball deep or you're going to come up with a trick play, that is the time to do it. And right there, Tuskegee defense, aware of where they were on the field, knew they had to get to the quarterback. Morehouse took advantage of it. Point after attempt is up, and it is good by Saldona Mora. And it started off by a big defensive play by the Maroon Tiger defense, which led to Tamaric Vanover Jr. able to get his touchdown reception over the head. And there you go. Maroon Tigers are off and running with a Reese Knuckles to Tamaric Vanover touchdown to open up the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic right here on a spot. 
behind the Morehouse support staff is Tamarick Vanover Jr., who got that 19-yard touchdown reception to open the scoring here at the 82nd Annual A.J. McClung Memorial Stadium and the 82nd Annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic game. And now Seldonia will kick off for the Maroon Tigers. And this one almost gets past Petway, and he's going to bring it back out to the 10. And looks like he got tripped up by the turf guards and brought down at about the 19-yard line. You know, going back to the, uh, the, the kickoff, you know, it's always interesting. You can always tell when you have a good kickoff coverage team, everybody hits that white line that the ball sits on at the same time. And everybody has uh, lane assignments. You have a guy that, that is supposed to run down on the outside of the numbers, a guy that runs down in between the numbers and the hash, runs down on the hash. So uh, that's always good to see what the kickoff team looks like. And we see the Demarcus Ezel, first time out, first series. High snap caused a free ball for Morehouse, which led to their opening score. Yeah, Vanover's dad, actually, I played against him in the pros. Low on the carry, and this time he is met quickly and wrapped up and brought down for, looks like a loss. Yeah, somehow or another Tuskegee has to get the uh, ball going here. And, and today, pay attention to the offensive line, uh, how the offensive line gets off the ball, uh, how they pass protect. Because, again, if Tuskegee is to have an opportunity, their quarterback has to throw the ball. The pass set up the run. The run sets up the pass. They will give him one yard, second down and nine. Ezell, this time he has brought down a sack. And once again, Brunde Conway, the senior from Pontiac, Michigan, with the sack and also the tackle on the previous play. Yeah, you see here, uh, Morehouse gets to the quarterback. Again, the offensive line has to protect. Morehouse brings pressure, gets to the quarterback. Now we're looking at a long third down. According to the head coach for the Golden Tigers, Willie Slater, he said getting to the red zone has been their problem. They've been able to get some big plays, but getting down the field has been difficult. Yeah, they got to get into the red zone. Got to Ezell with time, and catch is made. Enough for a first down. Good reception there by number 88 for the Golden Tigers, Chadron Johnson. Now, this is what Tuskegee can do. If you get a quarterback time, like I said, their offense is built to throw the ball. Give him time, the receivers will get open. And that's the first positive play that we've seen from Ezell. He's not been 100%, had a leg injury that has hampered him so far this season. Getting some pressure on the backside. And for the second time this drive, he is brought down for another sack. This time, Kamari Hunter, young man who got the fumble recovery in the last drive, able to get his first sack of the game. Same results from the last previous play. Morehouse brings pressure, which Morehouse is good at getting to the quarterback. These guys are averaging at least three to four sacks a game. And already, they've gotten two. They're halfway home. Halfway home. So rather than second and short, you're looking at second down and 14 for the Golden Tigers. Zell once again being pressured, trying to elude some tacklers, able to get some positive yards, but short of the first down. Yeah, the quarterback, the play breaks down. He doesn't have anywhere to throw the ball. And just like a good, smart quarterback, he's going to run the ball. If it's not there, if you don't see your first option, second option, use your legs. And that is exactly what he did. Puts it into a manageable third down. Third down efficiency has been their deficiency so far this season for the Golden Tigers from Tuskegee. Yeah, these, 
converting has not been uh, their cup of tea. Yeah, these guys have not been good on third down. Trying to get some time, getting pressure from Morehouse and tries to elude one tackler, does, but this time wrapped up short of the first. Looks like a punting situation. Yeah, even though the play breaks down, the quarterback is able to get out on the corner. Looked like he was going to have somewhere to run, but the speed of Morehouse's defense was able to get themselves back into play. Now they're forcing Tuskegee to kick the ball. Burton on the tackle, and now it's Tamarick Vanover Jr. back to receive the punt from Hall and gets it at his own 21. And he is brought down at about the 29-yard line, making the 28. Yeah, again, Vanover, um, his dad played with the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, I've had many battles against uh, his dad. So, so it's, you, it's you had to cover you had to cover him. So his dad was real good. Dad was real good. So it's good to see when uh, you played against someone's uh, father and you see their son out there playing uh, the same sport. And he's got two on the team. Got two Vanovers on Morehouse's ball club. One plays wide receiver, the other one plays defensive back. Increases his chances to get into the draft. <laughs> All right, first and 10 for the Maroon Tigers. And this time, Taylor takes no time. He looks, and there's a flag on the play, but he's able to get some positive yards, or they may be all coming back. John Sarig for Morehouse called on that hold. And Coach Freeman does not like to see those mental mistakes. No one likes to see penalties. I think anytime you get a penalty, you actually are shooting yourself in the foot. It's just not good. Don't give them free yards. That's what they always say. Second and long. They need to get basically to the 39 for first. And Taylor with a long pass intended for Reese Knuckles and incomplete. And so far, Taylor has done a good job of managing this team. He has nine touchdowns on the year as opposed to four interceptions. But so far, this offense has really, really gone at a high clip. Yeah, Taylor, he's the man for this offense. Trying for a nice pitch and catch, incomplete and intended for Ahmad Heron. down at 21 yards for the first. Now, unlike Tuskegee, Morehouse is pretty good at third down, but this is a long third down here. Taylor looks back, but now he says, you know what, I got room to run, gets out beyond the 30, and close to a first down, he may be a half yard short depending on the spot. They give him a positive spot. Looks like he got enough for the first down. Interesting play. He looks back, says, well, nothing's there. I'm going to go the other way. Yeah, what they were trying to do here, they were trying to get the, the defense to flow towards the quarterback, go where the man has the ball. They were trying to trick him again like they did earlier, but Tuskegee stayed at home, and Taylor had to actually run the ball, and he ended up getting the first down uh, for the house. Nice easy run by Frank Bailey Jr., his first carry of the afternoon, able to get about three, possibly four yards. Running the football is not necessarily their forte, less than 100 yards a game as a unit, but Bailey is one of the anchors of their rush offense. Yeah, I believe today's football game is built from the outside in. If you can throw the ball, I think you can have a great record no matter what league you play in. Pass out to Santa. Santo Dunn 
and Dunn able to get some positive yards close to midfield, enough for another first down. And now this offense, Maroon Tiger offense, is starting to get its feet. After the one-trick play, they're starting to roll a little bit. Yeah, this is how you keep your efficiency high. You keep the passes short, you put the ball into your playmaker hands, and you allow them to get yards after the catch. And again, this is uh, symbolic of the old West Coast offense. Even though that was a receiver type of screen, bubble screen, it's short yardage, an extension of the run. Taylor eludes one tackle, gets back to the line of scrimmage and stretches out for maybe a one-yard game. Now, now, this is where I would like to see Taylor kind of have a little bit more uh, patience in that pocket. Uh, sit there, sit there, because there, there were receivers that were coming open. So, but these quarterbacks uh, that are athletic, sometimes if they're not being taught properly or they don't remind themselves, they will take off and run with the ball when all you have to do is stay there for another split second and a man will come over, a receiver will come over. Give to Bailey Jr. He'll lose one gold jersey, but not all of them. Now, you're going to give Tuskegee defense credit, too. Now, these guys, you're going to have someone that's all great play, contain, someone to force the running back back to the pursuit. And you see about four, uh, five Tuskegee helmets over there making that play. And that's what you want to see from your defense. You want to see someone come up, set the edge, make the quarterback stutter his feet, and then you want to see a bunch of your teammates coming in to help you make the tackle. Third and long, they were able to convert in this drive and now getting some pressure knuckles able to get beyond midfield keeps his feet and depending on where they spot him he may be about four or five yards short of the first and he's out at the about the 44 yard line interesting to see what rich freeman does on this one yeah the thing here the longer you allow the quarterback to hold the ball the defense kind of gets spread it out and you can see right there uh the running back was open he didn't quite get the first but anytime the quarterback is able to hold the ball and that's what i mean hold the ball and the receivers will have an opportunity to get open and taylor will stay in looks like on fourth down they're going to go for it so we've already seen a trick play and now we're going to see a uh fourth down try for the Maroon Tiger. He is putting it all out there early. Yeah, this is where you have confidence in your offense. You also have confidence in your defense. Timeout called by Morehouse. And we'll see if Morehouse can convert on their first fourth down attempt right here on a spot. There's a new... Liberty stands with you. Liberty... And the Tuskegee cheerleaders trying to find something to cheer about as their team trails Morehouse seven to nothing. Rich Freeman going forward on fourth down. They've already had one trick play that helped them score. And now they're trying to see if they can continue this drive that started deep in their own territory. Taylor trying to pitch and catch with his tight end Ryan Edwards, but this one goes uh, to the far left of his shoulder and incomplete. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't even think the receiver was uh, anticipating the ball coming to him. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, Morehouse is basically 33% on fourth down. Uh, but I kind of understand you're on the other side of the 50, uh, have confidence in your defense, but at, at, at this point you do have to try to kick the ball. Uh, but again, they felt comfortable in their offense. That means the defense is held, and now can the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee capitalize off of their best field position so far in the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic. Ezell, with plenty of time, finds a receiver for a reception. Johnson, Chadron Johnson on the catch. Great patience by the quarterback here. Rolls out to his right. Looking, first receiver is not open. Turns his head, goes to the second read. Receiver gets the first down. Nice quarterback uh, action right there. He has been pressured all afternoon. Already been sacked two times and pressured all series long. 
A fumble on the play, and this time Tuskegee's able to recover, but they lose a number of yards on that play back to midfield. Hodrick Lowe getting the loose ball. Yeah, even though Tuskegee is returning a lot of their offensive linemen, they are having problems whenever Morehouse decides to bring more than four guys. So, again, pay attention to the offensive line to see how well Tuskegee is going to play today. Regardless of what type of field uh, uh, they get, uh, where the offense is located on the football field, if you cannot block, you cannot produce a positive play. Second down, and we'll call it 19. They really need to get to the 30-yard line of Morehouse for first. Ezell this time getting pressure from Lucky and others. This time he is brought down. Tackle made by Antonio Johnson, the defensive end from Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, that time there, Morehouse just came with a regular four-man pressure, four-man rush, and dropped back the rest of the guys, the other seven guys, and still yet the quarterback didn't have anywhere to throw, he ends up in a sack. And he leads the SIAC in sacks. That is his fifth and a half sack so far this season. You always got to know where the playmakers are on offense and defense. They have to be accountable. On third and forever. Throwing. Incomplete. Pass intended for Peyton Ramsey. That was a great move off of the line of scrimmage by Mr. Ramsey. Uh, gave the cornerback a dip on the inside. The cornerback fell for it. He had a good release on the outside. Just had a ball that was just thrown to the outside out of bounds. Tomorrow, Vanover Jr. back deep for Morehouse. And the all-conference, all-SIAC special teams player of the week, Dalton Hall, back to punt. He is averaging... Oh, just about 42 yards a punt. His longest is 68. And you see the young man stats right there. Fourth SIAC player of the week trophy so far. So that means he's pretty good. Yeah, sometimes your kicker, your punter, can be your best offense and your best defense. Penalty moving them back further, another five yards. Hall. Vanover will take it at his own 22. And he gets out to about the 26 before he is tripped up. So far, we've seen a bunch of trick plays, and we've seen Tuskegee look out of sync. But so far in the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic, it's the Maroon Tigers who are up early by seven. And welcome back to the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic. It is the upstart Morehouse Maroon Tigers with the seven to nothing lead over the Tuskegee Golden Tigers. James Red, along with Tyrone Poole here at A.J. McClung Stadium in Columbus, Georgia. And we've had trick plays, fumbles, sacks, a little bit of everything coming from the Maroon Tigers. And this time on the end around, Reese Knuckles able to get some positive yards. Yeah, we've had about everything we could possibly see uh, from trick plays to sacks to overthrown passes. So I guess we're having a pretty good football game. That's what's all found in football, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Eugene Leach on the tackle for Tuskegee. And for Rich Freeman, he wants to try to get a win. It has been very elusive to beat Tuskegee under Rich Freeman. He's only had one victory under his belt against the Golden Tigers. Taylor. Finds a receiver and able to get some yards, but there is a flag on the play. Reception made by Emir Smith, young man out of Grady High School in Atlanta. A lot of laundry early on in this one. Yeah, anytime, again, you have a classic, you have two teams that know one. In the backfield. Off. Second down. You're going to have some penalties and 
Uh, we have two teams, two teams that are trying to get themselves uh, and stay on top in their respective uh, conferences. Uh, sometimes you put too much pressure on yourself, and uh, that laundry comes out on the field. Moves him back five. Kevon Taylor trying to get the play because they go with a no, no huddle. Trying to get the right play now with the play clock going down to less than 10 seconds. Needs to get it off so he doesn't get back-to-back -back penalty. Gets it off just in time, but this time he gets some pressure. He eludes one defender, and this time he will go down for a three-yard loss. First sack of the day for Taylor. Now, both of these teams, like I said, they like to throw the ball. Uh, Morehouse, they are passing the ball at least 37 times per game. So uh, you're going to see a lot of Taylor doing this, dropping back to throw, but you may also see him on the ground a lot today if they continue to throw the ball. The offensive line doesn't step up and give him time to throw the ball. Third down and long. He needs to get out to about the 37-yard line to make sure he has enough for the first. Taylor throws a floater high, almost intercepted, but root incompletion. Darnell Hill was the defender that could have had an easy run toward the end zone if he could have picked that one off. Yeah, that's one of those balls that when it's fluttering in the air, you just know you have it. Right there, I think DB just mistimed his jump, uh, but that, that is the type of pass as a quarterback. When you see, see it leave your hand, you all automatically run it back. Gonzalez to punt. Tuskegee will take it at their own 43. Has some room to run is Petway, and Petway is brought down into Morehouse territory at the 45-yard line. Ladario Petway on the return. Well, good starting position for Morehouse. Um, looked like that return was going to be bigger than what it was, but they have the ball in good field position. So a couple of first down. Uh, downs and they can find themselves in possibility of a field goal. But I know Tuskegee, they want touchdowns. Need touchdowns. They need <laughs> touchdowns. They can get there. If they can get there, they know how to put it in. These guys, 80% of the time when they get inside the red zone, they are going to score. It's just a problem of getting there. And it's Jamarcus Ezel's role to get his team into that end zone right now, first and 10 from Morehouse is 46. Gets the low, and low is hit low and brought down for a loss. Nice play there from the nice open field tackle by Terrence Mitchell for Morehouse. Yeah, Terrence Mitchell, knife through. Everybody, this is what it looks like on defense when everyone does their job. And you leave that one guy who is supposed to make the tackle, he makes the tackle. So uh, great defensive uh play by Morehouse there. Two-yard loss, second and 12. Ezell finds low. Low has room to run, and he tries to stay in bounds, but it looks like he stepped out of bounds, and looks like we're going to have a little pushing and shoving and some clapping going on. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Eh? I, I don't know what you what the clap means, but <laughs> Lowe got enough for the first down, but he wants to clap with the defender from Morehouse. Yeah, again, Morehouse comes, brings the pressure, but this time uh, Tuskegee was able to get rid of the ball. They had a clear-out route by the receiver, which allows that running back to be wide open, and that's what you do. Uh, as we said, Roger, he's supposed to have a great game today, uh, and that's what he's doing. Now, now what's the clap? I don't, I don't know what the clap is. Well, they have so many terminologies and things that the young people are doing today. I'm still trying to figure out what that is. <laughs> Here we go, first and 10. They give it to Lowe on the inside. He's not known as an inside runner, and it is very evident because he has pushed back Kenneth Higgins, Higgins with the tackle. They got a lot of things going on. Yeah, a lot of things going on, but they got to get Lowe into the game. 
you got to get efficient. And he has a disheveled jersey, and right now Tuskegee looks a little disheveled. They've had turnovers, and they've given the opportunity for Morehouse to get on the board early. 82nd annual Morehouse Tuskegee Classic, and it's up by seven for Morehouse. And at Tuskegee, they say ball and parlay. That's the Tuskegee way, even when you're the smallest of Tuskegee Golden Tiger fans, right? Okay, Tuskegee. And at halftime, make sure you stay tuned to watch the graduates, see what happens when you have HBCU graduates go to Atlanta to see if their dreams can come true right here on Aspire TV at halftime. James Brent along with Tyrone Poole. We're starting the second quarter as Morehouse has a 7 to nothing lead here at the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic in Columbus, Georgia. Inside run goes nowhere fast. Hydric Lowe, and he's lost his helmet, which means he has a lead for a day, and we're going to have some. Uh, love, love, and more football love, and he's sort of upset because his helmet fell, fell off. Yeah, and you know, any, anytime if one of your star players go go out the game, uh, the next person in line has to step up. But um, Tuskegee has to establish the running game. Uh, these guys, without low, they're a different team. Uh, yes, he'll be out just for one play, but that one play is could be one of many plays that decides whether or not. Uh, Tuskegee wins, but Tuskegee is actually running the ball 26 times per game. Now that sounds like a lot, but when you factor in the fact that the quarterback runs the ball uh, and the running backs run the ball, that's a very low number. Compared to you look at Albany State, they run the ball about 44 times uh, a game. So uh, that 26 doesn't look too much when you compare it to Albany State. Timeout has been called by Tuskegee, and we want to see exactly what they want to do on that third down. And from the executive producers of G, G. Garvin and Issa Rae is the hottest cooking show on television. And this Tuesday night, celebrity chef Carla Hall joins host Seth and Leslie in the kitchen. See what's cooking on an all-new season of Butter and Brown every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. right here on Aspire. I've had a chance to watch that show, and I actually get some good cooking tips. Now, we're going, before our Aspire broadcast is over, we're going to get you cooking. Okay. Uh, I can cook. I can cook. You can cook. It just depends on what you want me to cook. Okay. You can <laughs> flambe and do all that. I can cook breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you lunch if you got a uh, sandwich meat. Oh, is that? <laughs> oh, some cold cuts, things of that nature. Cold cuts. There you go. Third down and long for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Ezell, pitch and catch, reception made into the red zone. We go for the Golden Tigers. Way to go there. Yeah, here the quarterback rolls out, the offense blocks down even though he takes a hit there he delivers a pass complete to the receiver now morehouse is knocking on the door for school rogers on the reception for the golden tigers now again we talked about tuskegee uh not being productive in the red zone uh, not getting there but when they are in the red zone these guys are very productive 80 percent low Eludes one into the end zone. Touchdown, Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. As we said, if they can get in the red zone, get into the red zone, which is the 20-yard line in, these guys know how to score touchdowns. The problem has been they have not been down here as many times. But you give it to your guy low, give it to your best guy, your all-purpose uh, player, this is what you get. And Hodrick Lowe, he's lost his helmet and clapped his hands, and he is hyped up because after the point after attempt, we may have a tie ball game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he told the coach, give me the ball, and he walked by him right there. <laughs> and Dalton Hall, he is perfect on point after attempt so far this season, 11 for 11. And it will.
was a knuckleball, but it is good. Make it a perfect 12 for 12 for Dalton Hall. And Hydrick Lowe was able to get into the end zone and help his team tie it up here at the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic, eluding defenders and able to walk into the end zone right here on the spot. And as the crowd grows here at A.J. McClung Stadium, second quarter all tied up at seven for the 82nd annual Morehouse Tuskegee Football Classic. James Red along with Tyrone Poole, and we see Hodrick Lowe able to get Tuskegee finally on the board with a short touchdown run just a moment ago. And yeah, we finally get an opportunity to see Tuskegee uh, kick off the unit. So again, let's try to see if they all hit the line of scrimmage at the same time, where the ball is, that line that goes straight across the field. Usually a good coverage team, they all hit that line at the same time. All kicks it to Santo Dunn. Dunn trying to find some room and gets out to about the 26, call it 26 yard line. Yeah, a little left return action there. Uh, gets Morehouse in the play. Taylor comes out to see if he can answer the score by Morehouse, uh, the, at the score by Tuskegee uh, via their all-purpose guy, Low. And Taylor so far has managed to get his team with the early lead, but now can they regain that lead with the game all tied up? Looking to throw long, has a receiver, but overthrows intended for Tramel Gooden, young man from Creekside High School in Atlanta. Yeah, that particular play there, they were trying to catch deep the defensive backfield, the secondary, catch him sleep, tried to catch him on a long path, but the quarterback Taylor overthrows the receiver. But I'm pretty sure they've seen something in their film study, and we will see another deep pass at some point in this game. And we have movement. Defense, number 53, five yard penalty, second down. Movement there by Joshua Mincy from Tuskegee. Jumped off side. Now when that happens, there's either the quarterback is doing a great job of his cadence, or there's a lack of concentration by the defense, which uses both. <laughs> Trying to go for a pitch and catch. The Van Over catch is made, and they will say yes, it is a catch into Tuskegee territory for the first down. Great pitch and catch to Tamar Van Over Jr. Yeah, again, we see that deep ball again, as I said. Thing about college football, all you have to do is get one foot in. Now, if we were looking at professionally, then he would probably have to drag that second toe. But great throw and catch. Out to the 47 of the Golden Tigers. Bailey does not have a lot of room to run, met by a host of gold jerseys, and he may have lost one, possibly two yards. Yeah, this is uh, this kind of shows when you're not predominantly a running team. Uh, even though the ball bounces out uh, outside, you're forced to go outside. Uh, turn it up. You know you're not going to get positive yards. Just try to get what you can to save him and don't lose yards. McCutcheon on the tackle coming from that free safety position. He must have smelled run a mile away. Bailey this time has some room to run and more. He eludes a few tacklers able to get out to the 31 yard line before Osmond Thompson is able to drag him down with the jersey. Now I do believe when you run the ball up between the tackles, you're probably going to get more of a positive uh, outcome. So here Morehouse runs the ball between the tackles and they are able to get positive yards versus the last play trying to bounce it outside and Tuskegee was too fast. Give again to Bailey. Bailey finds another hole inside the 20 down to about the nine yard line and the offensive line for Morehouse is pushing back that vaunted defense of the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Yeah, anytime you want to see 
if the ball or you want to see a good running game, the ball running, watch the offensive line. Everybody gets a hat on their hat, pushes their guy out of the gap, and the ball that it opens up. Great running attack by Morehouse. And Tuskegee calls a timeout. I think he wants to try to give his guys a fresh breath and try to regroup because right now they're finding all the holes and that's Morehouse College. Exactly. Tuskegee throughout the whole season, they have, they're defensively, they have spent a lot of time on the field. And Coach Slater is not a happy camper right now because his defense is known to shut people down. And right now they're the ones that's getting gashed. Yeah, they're getting gashed. They're getting gashed and they're getting gashed. And uh, again, it all starts with the offensive line. You see here, everybody gets a hat on the hat, a block on the block, and he's able to run it back, he's able to find the, the, the crease and push it up for a big play. Again, offensive line, everybody just moving and allowing the running back to see and have great vision. And anytime you can do that, it's always going to turn into positive runs. They're inside the 10-yard line. Tuskegee calls a timeout to try to regroup. But it's been Frank Bailey Jr. and company on this drive, led by their quarterback, Kevon Taylor, able to move down the field and get into the red zone. And Morehouse is very good efficiency as far as the red zone getting it into the end zone. This time, it looks like the team in goal knew who was getting the ball. Bailey able to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, which is the nine. You're always going to know, if they didn't know about Bailey uh, before the game, they're beginning to understand who he is now. So, um, But again, Tuskegee, uh, offensively, they do a great job in the red zone. These guys are in tops. Uh, leave second in the SIAC as far as converting touchdowns whenever they get in this position to score. Second and goal. Taylor with a nice bullet, but good defensive play made by Marlon Parnell for Tuskegee, able to bat it away. Yeah, Marlon, that's what you call textbook as far as a corner. Looking at the defensive back, he comes in, uses the proper arm, knocks the ball down, incomplete. He actually gives them the signal, incomplete. <laughs> Now, if he would have used that other arm, he could have been pass interference. Yeah, if he'd have clapped. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, if he'd have used the other arm, I'm pretty sure the other arm was hanging where the ref couldn't see it. So he did use it. Now, believe me. <laughs> Third down and goal. Taylor, this time he's brought down for a sack. Big play by the Golden Tigers, able to wrap him up. You know, I always wonder why you send everybody into the end zone. And right there you saw the quarterback really didn't have an underneath throw. Everybody's running in the end zone. The pocket breaks down. Tuskegee gets the sack. But I always felt like you always got to have a check down element to any part of your passing game. Juan Adams along with Whitehead there on the sack. Field goal attempt now for Morehouse. About a 30-yarder, and it is good. So the drive does not go without points. Fernando sells Demora in with a 30-yard field goal to make it 10-7 in favor of the Maroon Tigers right here on his spot. And 10-7 is your score with a 30-yard Fernando sells the Mora field goal and has Rich Freeman's Morehouse College Maroon Tigers up, and it is Tuskegee who will get the ball back to see if they can answer. James Red along with Tyrone Poole here in Columbus, Georgia, along the Chattahoochee River here at A.J. McClung Stadium. And now we'll have Alex Gonzalez on to do the kickoff duties for the Maroon Tigers and back deep, Audrey Lowe and company trying to see if they can answer. Now, one thing about when these two teams meet up, I don't think you're going to have a boring game. Uh, these, like I said, they've been playing since 1935. Uh, there's rich tradition here. 
So you're not going to see a boring game. Even if the game does get boring, the bands, the fans, it's just a great, rich environment here at this classic. And the city of Columbus does a great job of embracing not only their classic, but also the Fountain City classic. Exactly, exactly. And a lot of revenue comes into uh, this game. I think over $700,000. And flag, that's nothing to shake a stick at. You know, you're saying $700,000, that's a lot of money. Kick goes out of bounds. means that they will accept the penalty and bring it out to about the 35. Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, yeah, back in the day, uh, you know, well, it depends on the coach, I guess, also. Uh, they would make them kick it again. It's the 35-yard line, first down. They already tired running down on kickoff and kick it again they can make them kick it again <laughs> okay and then they give you a return you get, a good chance they get a good opportunity to get bigger yardage and coach Slater definitely trying to crack the code to see if he can get his team rolling the way that a lot of people know that Tuskegee's offense can go but it's Jamarcus Ezel and company with their drive here in the second quarter Getting a lot of pressure, and this time he goes down again. His third time he's been brought to the ground. This time Antonio Johnson, who leads the conference in, swags, in sacks, his second sack of the day. Again, Morehouse brings pressure. They are getting there with a four-man rush, and they're also getting there when they bring the extra man. So uh, Tuskegee offensive line, again, line play is going to be very important for both of these teams. And uh, right now, Tuskegee offensive line, even though they're veterans, they're having a hard time. Second and long. Movement on that line. No flag is thrown. And quarterback is brought down for another loss on the keeper. And sometimes even when the ref doesn't throw uh, the flag or blow the whistle, the players within themselves are anticipating that the ref is going to blow or throw the flag, and that kind of throws the play off. So right here, you see that the players thought maybe the ref would throw or blow the whistle, throw the flag, blow the whistle. He didn't. The play breaks down. That's a positive for Morehouse. Now, Tuskegee looking at a third and long. That's third, third 17. 17. They need to get out basically to the 45 for first. Trying for a pitch and catch. Catch is made. Jeffrey Bowens on the reception, and it looks like it's enough for a first down. Move the chains, and he paid the price, but he was able to hold on. Yeah, great quarterback. He zipped it in. Look at that mustard, basically, as they say. He had a strong throw there. The ball stuck to the receiver's shoulder pad. No way in that he couldn't do nothing but catch that pass there. So great throw and catch. Give Tuskegee an opportunity to get three more downs. Work their way out of a hole. They're out to their own 45-yard line, and... It's Bowens, the young man, a Mercer transfer, able to help Ezel get his team out of that deep hole that they were in. Good inside run by Phillip Brown. He is the backup fullback now have to go into a starting role because their starting fullback, Eric Bright, is out with an injury. And we were told that Brown would get some touches, and that's his first touch of the afternoon. Yeah, this is going to be very important for Tuskegee offense to get a lot of snaps. These guys basically have the lowest output in the SIAC as far as number of plays. So when your offense is on the field less, that means your defense is on the field more, which is not a good formula for success. To highlight that against Albany, they only had 27 offensive plays in their loss to Albany State. Ezell trying to find someone. He does, and Jeffrey Bowens, and will they call it a reception? They do. And it is enough to get them closer to a first down. They may be about four yards short. Yeah, Ezell here, the ball's a little high, floats on him a little bit, leads the receiver a little too far. And uh, But the receiver did a heck of a job even putting 
the, uh, the, giving the ball an opportunity to be caught. Third and five as we are hitting the halfway point of that second quarter. Running the option, gets it out to low. And the Maroon Tiger defense sniffs it out, gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it was a host of white jerseys right there to meet Mr. Lowe. This is how you do it. If you want to stop the option, this is how you do it. You have to make the quarterback make a decision real quick. He makes a decision real quick. Now to gives the defense an opportunity to pursue. Guy contains, makes the quarterback, the running back turn the ball up. Now Tuskegee is punting the ball once again. Vanover Jr. back deep for Morehouse. Dalton Hall. Calls for a fair catch, and he gets it at about the 16, 17-yard line. 10-7 is your score, and can Morehouse add on to it? Rich Freeman trying to get a huge victory under his belt for his team right here on his spot. First hair. And the famous Chattahoochee River divides Phoenix City, Alabama from one of the jewels in the state of Georgia, Columbus, Georgia. They even have a zip line that goes across that Chattahoochee River there, Tyrone. Yeah, I think right about now, the way the water level looks, I would probably get on that zip line. Uh, well, you know, if they need some more water, I got a guy. Who's that guy? His name's Nate. He's out in the Gulf right now. He's a hurricane. You it's coming. Him? It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming. Don't worry. <laughs> Nate will come and put a little bit more water there in the Chattahoochee. <laughs> Talking about zip lines. And see, I couldn't do that. No. You'll do that? Tyron, yeah. you'll do that. Yeah, I would. I would. Again, it, it, it's fun. It's fun. That, I've that's done it fun? before. Yeah, that's I, not fun. I've done it. Man invented bridges. <laughs> you see, they invented bridges. Right. Why go back? Let's go forward. Trying to go forward right now is Morehouse and Bailey trying to find some room. And this time, Osmond Taylor is right there to bring him down, but not before he was able to gain a couple of yards on the carry. Yeah, anytime you get any types of, I'm pretty sure they wanted this play to go farther than what it did, but anytime you get any movement, yards, any type of positive yards is always good. But I'm pretty sure that play was designed to get more than what it did. So it brings up a, a, a third down. Uh, manageable play for Morehouse. Knuckles in motion. I think I like that name, Knuckles. Greasy Knuckles, but it's Taylor who has fleet of foot, and he able to get enough for the first down on the quarterback keeper. Yeah, this is the thing that a quarterback who can run the ball and throw the ball, this is the type of pressure, and this is also the gift for a particular offense. The defense is going to drop back because they respect his ability to throw the ball. But then when they drop back, if the first guy's not there, second guy's not there, you should be getting the first down. That's exactly what Taylor did on that play. Give to Bailey. He's able to basically keep, keep the defense honest. They're not asking him to do a lot. Just go forward. Yeah, even if you're not getting positive yards, you still have to run the ball. You can't abandon the run. Uh, because once you start abandoning the run, then defenses, they pin their ears back, so to speak, and they go after your quarterback. So regardless, if you're not running the ball like you want to, you still have to run it to keep balance for your offense and run attack. Taylor looking for his tight end, Edwards. And once again, that's second in completion to Ryan Edwards, the young man from Mays at 6'3", 250 senior. And team captain. Yeah, great defensive play by Mr. Brandon there, number 30. Great uh, arrival. Uh, when the ball got there, he was there to force and cause the incomplete. When you're a defensive back going up against a larger tight end, is it a matter of making sure you're in a, a good position to block him? or you want to make sure you have your hands ready to try to rip the ball away. Yeah, anytime you're covering a big guy, they're always going to buy the position. So you got to make sure you're in the right position to get around him to knock the ball down. Pitch and catch to Amir Smith. 
able to get some positive yards, and Taylor paid the price on that when his teammates able to pull him up. Yeah, and, and that's what you don't want to see. You don't want to see your quarterback getting up off the ground. Yes, it was a complete pass, but the quarterback also took a hit. So those hits uh, throughout the game began to wear. Greasy Knuckles trying to get to the outside, not able to outrun the defense of Tuskegee, and he is brought down. Leach there to push him out of bounds. And that's a, he has most likely the best name of the day. Greasy Knuckles. Greasy Knuckles. Got to look. Got to look. It's, it's, it's a good mob name, good boxing name, and a good football name. It's all around. It's all around. <laughs> And, and you know what? He's intimidating. Just Sound like a candy alone. bar, too, though. Huh? Sound like a candy bar? Well, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of bumps in that. <laughs> I don't know if I want all that. Second down and 10. Bailey. And this time he is brought down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you know, Tuskegee had, uh, has given up runs up the middle. Uh, they're fairly stout when you try to get to the outside of them. Uh, but if Morehouse goes back, and if their guys sitting up uh, in the booth watching the game, understand this. You guys have had success running up the middle. Let's go back and run the ball up the middle. Well, if you're an offensive coach, when you find something that, that was that lethal, do you hold it in your back pocket when you need it? No, you keep using it until they stop it. If they can't stop it, you keep coming with it. Taylor looking for Edwards. Third time is the charm. Great pitch and catch to Ryan Edwards. Enough for a first down. They have been trying it all afternoon long, and this time he did find the seat. Yeah, Taylor here again. Good step, good delivery. The ball's falls right into the receiver hands. That's why he is ranked in the top three when it comes to pass efficiency. He gives his receivers an opportunity to catch the ball. Gives again to Edwards, the hot hand. He gets another first down for Morehouse. It looks like they, the defense, particularly the backfield for Tuskegee, they're a little confused right now. Well, I think sometimes it's predicated on the defense that they're playing as well. Right there, most of the time, the slot guy is not going to be covered. The linebacker or the safety is off. It's an easy, quick throw. He can get some positive yards. So sometimes it's the scheme of the defense. Bailey, this time goes nowhere fast and is quickly wrapped up by Twan Edwards. Adams. Twan Adams on the stop. Juan has been active from that defensive end position. A lot of their players are a little bit undersized, but they use that speed in order to overcome their lack of size. Yeah, anytime their size doesn't mean nothing to, to a point. Uh, most of the time, you're going to see your defensive lineman not going to be as big as your offensive line. Taylor looking for Vanover, and he overthrows and throws it deep into the end zone for him to finish. Yeah, great coverage by Marlon. Uh, Vanover squeezes him out. Uh, that's good technique. Uh, the quarterback didn't have anywhere to throw the ball. He had to throw it out of bounds because of the technique there by Marlon. So great technique, pushing the receiver, getting your shoulder into him, leading him out of bounds. Third downs have been very good for Rich Freeman and, and Kevon Taylor so far on this drive. Every time they've been pushed back, They've been able to find a way out. Can they do it one more time? Taylor pitch and catch. Catch made inside the 10-yard line. Another first down for the Maroon Tigers. This one goes to Santo Dunn for Morehouse. Yeah, you see right here, Tuskegee comes with a blitz. Taylor recognizes it, sits in the pocket, and delivers a perfectly thrown ball for yet another big play. Are they picking on Eugene Leach, number six? No, anytime when you recognize a blitz, you have to throw the ball wherever uh, uh, the hot read usually is. Uh, and just so happen, if the ball comes to your particular receiver a lot, it seems like they're picking on you. But sometimes it's built in as far as where they go with the ball. This time Taylor's going to keep it. 
on the keeper in for the end zone for a score. Put six more on the board for the Maroon Tigers from the house. Yeah, a little bit of uh, extra activity right there after the score. But again, Taylor uses his legs, gets into the end zone again for Morehouse. Great guy. He can throw the ball. He can run. That's what you want in your star player. You see right here, fake the dive. Fake it like he's going to throw it to the receiver. Actually even uses the finger to fool the defensive guy to make him think that somebody was about to block the defensive guy, which made the defensive guy kind of screw up a little bit. Defense, number that penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Try. Personal foul against Osmond Taylor, the team captain. And you can see right now, he scored, Kevon sc scored so much, he got sick. He's not feeling too well right now. Yeah, that, that, that's, that, that's called a little too, too much to eat uh, pregame problem. A little still bit too much grease from breakfast? Yeah, a little too much of that food still left over in his stomach. But he'll feel better afterwards. Yeah, afterwards. So you add too much food, you add in the classic, 82nd classic, that's, that's a lot to stomach. <laughs> that's very true. Point after attempt by Sells Demora is good. And once again, we take a look at the touchdown run by Taylor. Yeah, great action again. Points the finger. Defensive guy overruns. Gets into the end zone. Touchdown. A little bit of extra curricular activity, as they say. And what happens when HBCU graduates enter the real world? Find out in the Aspire original series, The Graduates ATL, coming up at halftime. They didn't have a reality show when I graduated from college. <laughs> I don't even think they had uh, certain internet, internet activity <laughs> when we were in college. Well, no, that's true. That's very, very true. The internet was just coming up. Just coming on. We were the uh, boomers of it. They are the, what would you say? They are the, we were the, we were the starters. They are the finishers. Uh, continuation of the internet, so. That, that is very true. Aldrich Lowe, hoping to get a big play as his team trails 17 to seven. With the penalty, kicking from midfield will be Alex Gonzalez for Morehouse. Even have those big cell phones. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> the bag phone. Lowe will kneel it in on the K, deep in his own end zone. I do remember the back phone. Communication. <laughs> Communication is important. And for Willis Slater, he's trying to communicate to his team, hey, guys, we got to turn this thing around because if we get down too much, we can't make a miraculous comeback. We're not built for that right now. We're not built for that because their offense is not staying out there on the field uh, to be able to build themselves themselves up like this so you're right uh, if I'm Tuskegee I don't want to get too far down in a hole because these guys are averaging just over two touchdowns a game touchdowns have been hard to come by to Marcus Ezel is really just coming back from a leg injury he has not been hundred percent all year and well, now he needs to direct his team well, when they say you step out in that football field, you are 100%. Ah, oh, batted down. Good play there by Trayvon Lucky. Able to get one of those big paws out there. Yeah, another great play by Morehouse's defense. Put pressure. Forces the quarterback to throw an air errand pass. And now they're looking at a second and team. So I'm pretty sure Morehouse would love to get an opportunity to get the ball back and try to score again. About 45 seconds left in this game. Halftime before half. We can't leave yet. We can't leave yet. <laughs> but as far as the first half of the game. <laughs> Trying to make something happen is Ezell getting some pressure. And this time, once again, not able to get past that defensive line of Morehouse. Those hands in the way made that pass go a little awry. Yeah, and any time the defense, no matter what you're doing, uh, what sport you're playing, uh, there are tendencies, uh, things that happen during the game that have a tendency to get to you mentally. And uh, I got to believe that the sacks, the batted balls are beginning to wear mentally on the quarterback and his ability that he believes that he can deliver a good pass. Ezell. 
keeping it on third down, trying to keep the drive alive, and he gets enough for the first, but there is a flag all the way back at the 23-yard line that may bring it all back. Usually that's offense, if you see it back there. Holding, offense, one, one yard penalty, third down. And another penalty against the Golden Tigers. This time a holding call, which brings it all back. Yeah, if you can't block them, you hold them. Anything you can do to try to keep your quarterback protected. Leeward Brown called on that penalty, and he stands at 6'4", 340, playing the center position. That's very rare when you got a big guy like that that can hike it. Yeah, you know, Tuskegee, they're bringing back a lot of their guys that played last year. So these guys understand the position. So uh, holding penalties, penalties, period, uh, should not be normal. Third and long. Ezell keeps it and gets back to the original line of scrimmage, but not much more, which should be a punting situation. But we'll get to the end of the first half. The horn will sound. And here at A.J. McClung Memorial Stadium in Columbus, Georgia, it is upset bid on the move as Morehouse has been able to get 17 points on Tuskegee. Tuskegee has not been able to move their offense, but can they do it in the second half? Halftime coming up right here on a spot. Halftime here at A.J. McClung Stadium. 17-7 is your score in favor of Morehouse. Coming up next, meet the graduates from ATL. In this week's episode, Berto invites all of the graduates to brunch where the group explores the myths and rules of relationships. Presenting now, the graduates ATL. And welcome back. Halftime here at A.J. McClung Stadium for the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Football Classic. 17-7 is your score in favor of the Maroon Tigers. And leaving the field right now is the Morehouse marching band. And taking the field shortly will be Tuskegee. We'll have more halftime interviews and highlights coming up after this break. And we're watching the sights and sounds of the Tuskegee Marching Band as they trail their football team, that is, 17-7 to, to the Morehouse Maroon Tigers at the 82nd Annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic. Hello, everybody. I'm James Red, and I am joined by longtime athletic director until a halftime here at A.J. McClung Stadium here in Columbus, Georgia. 17-7 is your score in favor of the Maroon Tigers from the house. We'll have more halftime right after the break. And the fans here in Columbus, Georgia are being entertained by the Tuskegee marching band. A lot of people don't know the Commodores came out of the same uniforms that this uh, group of band members are wearing right now. They were band members of the Tuskegee University marching band. James Red, along with Tyrone Poole. And Tyrone, this has been an entertaining first half if you're a Morehouse fan. Yeah, it's been very entertaining if you're a Morehouse fan. But uh, Tuskegee, don't lose hope. Don't lose They're hope. They're still in the game. They're still in Two the game. Two scores away, they could be in the lead. Well, it seems as though offensively they have not been able to really get on track. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what Tuskegee is going to have to do going into the second half. They are going to have to get their offense back on pace. The tempo. They got to get the tempo back. All right. We'll have some highlights from the first half and leading the way. It was that high snap. And it was Morehouse that was able to get the recovery and then trick play early. Yeah, open the series, opening up the game. It's always a lot of energy. And this is the opportunity to take advantage of that energy. And then it would be Hodrick Lowe who would be able to really catapult the offense. He's their big play player, and he's the only one able to get in the end zone for Tuskegee. Yeah, Hodrick Lowe, he's their game player. He's their all-purpose guy. But then it would be the last touchdown of the first half, and it would be Kevon Taylor who would make his way in and even have a little bit more. You see the statistics right now. It's all Morehouse. Yes, yeah, all Morehouse. Again, Tuskegee, we know their rich tradition as far as what they want to do is throwing the ball. Uh, these guys, if they can get in the red zone, they are high percentage-wise, they will get a touchdown. 
And when we come back, we'll have more of halftime and get you ready for the second half. 17-17 is your score in favor of the Maroon Tigers right here on Aspire. And we see the drum line for Tuskegee. And hopefully their football team offensively can hit the right notes. Right now they trail 17 to 7. James Red along with Tyrone Poole here in the great city of Columbus, Georgia. Fort Benning is one of the main attractions here along with the Chattahoochee River. But this football game is one of the attractions for 82 consecutive years they have played here, Tyrone. Yeah, 82 consecutive years. And also the stadium is actually named after uh, one of uh, Tuskegee's uh, sons, uh, AJ. So uh, he went to Tuskegee. Dalton Hall with the kick, and it will be Reese Knuckles who will take it at his own 15-yard line. Knuckles able to get some room to run out to the 40, gets upended at the 43-yard line. Reese Knuckles with the return. I just love that name, Reese Knuckles. Sounds like a big play every time you say it. Uh, he sounds like a bigger guy. You see Knuckles, just a sophomore out of Swanee, Georgia, just 5'8", 175. But you know what? That just, it fits. His yeah, name is so big, he plays big, but he's a small guy. Yes, yes. Great return. Gives uh, Morehouse a good opportunity uh, to be the first one to score in this second half. So Taylor comes out, and we're going to see what he can do with his offense. Got some laundry on the field at midfield. Let's see what the official call is. Foul. Foul. Receiving team. 15-yard penalty. First down. Personal foul. That's our third personal foul call so far this game, and that one goes against Morehouse. Rich Freeman does not like that because all the positive yards Reese obtained, 15 of them go back. 15 of them go back. So uh, you don't want to have penalties. Uh, again, you don't want to. Uh, they are drive killers. They are emotional killers. Uh, so hopefully it doesn't affect Morehouse on this drive here going forward. Taylor and thrown out of bounds high pass and Taylor got a little ill at the end of the first half after he scored on the quarterback keeper to make it 17 to 7 but he's still right back out there obviously what you said a little bit too much breakfast a little too much grease a lot of emotion means that your breakfast comes up yeah, usually, believe it or not, when you actually get rid of that toxin that's in your stomach or in your body, you actually have a little bit more energy. Now, of course, after the game, he's going to be looking for something to eat. <laughs> but right now, he probably feels a whole lot better. Taylor finds his favorite tight end, Ryan Edwards, and he's able to get some positive yards. And you've already talked about it. When you go up against a tight end the size of Taylor Sands at 250, about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, positioning for that defensive back is important, right? Yeah, it's just like getting a rebound. you got to position yourself in order to get the ball off the backboard. Same thing in football. You have to position yourself to get around the guy to have the tra uh, right trajectory point where, as a defensive back, you go where the quarterback is throwing the ball and you try to get yourself in position and knock it down. Taylor, and this one almost intercepted. Marlon Parnell, if he would have just held on a little bit more, that was an opportunity for a pick. Yeah, Marlon has been having a great game. Uh, he has defended the long ball, the deep ball, and now right here he has an opportunity to uh, bring it in. Like they say, catch the ones that come to you. He's had a couple that have come his way that have gone out of his hands. Gonzalez on the punt, and Petway back deep for Tuskegee. Fair catch, and catch is made at about the 25-yard line for Petway. So if you're Tuskegee's defense, you won the day. Yeah, you, you, you always want to go three and out uh, on any opening drive, whether it's the beginning of the game or it's the opening of the second half. A three and out is what you want. You want to get that momentum uh, going into the second half, and... Uh, coming out of halftime. So right now, Tuskegee gives themselves a little bit of uplift with a three and out. Now hopefully, hopefully that'll carry over to their offense. 
Not a lot going on in the first half for the Golden Tigers. Ezell hit from behind, and this time he is smacked once again. The third sack of the day for Antonio Johnson. He leads the conference, and right now he is definitely leading the way for the Maroon Tigers. Yeah, here you see the quarterback looks to his right, throwing right, nothing there. And the Morehouse uh, defense is able to get there for the sack. Uh, great coverage on the back end. So we haven't said a lot about uh, Morehouse's secondary, but uh, they have enabled the D-line. Their coverage has been so good that they've allowed the D-line to get there to get the sacks. And Johnson is coming after Ezell again. This time he has some room and overthrows his intended receiver. Incomplete. Yeah, again, you get the quarterback on the run. And because you understand the drops, talking about the defensive guys, they understand their awareness and their drops. So the quarterback now is forced to throw the ball not only over the short defender, which goes over the receiver, but it could have been an interception by the Morehouse safety. That's always good defense when you have your guys drop in the, in the right place. You just love that as a defensive coordinator when you see that ball go in, incomplete. Third down. Once again, pressure this time coming. And they'll say no, the ball was down. But once again, a sack this time by David Smith, the strong side linebacker who's third in the conference in tackle. Yeah, again here, Morehouse comes, get good pressure on the quarterback. The offensive line breaks down. All their routes are in the middle of the field. That's exactly where Morehouse had their defenders. Nowhere to throw. Quarterback goes down once again. All back to punt for Tuskegee. Again, talk about Vandover. That is the same position his dad also played. He was a punt returner. Short punt takes a Morehouse bounce before Tuskegee downs it. It'll be down at about the 48-yard line of Tuskegee. And once again, it has been that maroon Tiger defense that has given Ezell nightmares as T Tuskegee trails Morehouse 17-7. to seven. Rise and shine. And one of the many advantages of coming to the 82nd Annual Morehouse Tuskegee Football Classic is that, the food. Look at the food, Tyrone. Look at the food. Look at all those barrel pits, gas pits. Yeah, sausages. Yeah. Chicken. Half a chicken. Oh, think, yeah. Now, I think now, that's I, Taylor had. You think he, that that's why he was throwing up? He was well, he may, up. he may have, while he was walking by, picked or up a, you know, a chicken wing or two. Leg. There it is. There it is. But I see, I love how the guy was spraying the marinade. You got to spray it on while it's hot. That's the sound of great barbecue person. Taylor trying to add on to the lead. He has a lot of room to run and does the smart thing and slides, but gets a lot of positive yards out to about the 32-yard line, enough for another first down for Morehouse. Uh, and, you know, this is where, as a uh, defense, uh, you, you start to look at yourself and you start to try to figure out how do we stop these guys because now they understand what we're doing on defense. And, but still, yet as a defensive player, you have to have to take care of your responsibilities. So right now, the defensive coaches for Tuskegee got to be scratching their heads. He's going to keep it once again. This time, they're trying to find it, but not before he gets more positive yards out inside the 30-yard line. A great play, uh, forcing the quarterback not to get as much as he wanted. But nevertheless, Tuskegee, has to continue to play just like the previous play which you just saw. Uh, they got to get and cannot allow Morehouse to get any type of points uh, on this particular possession. And Taylor trying to get the call from the sideline. They stay in a no huddle as they've done all game long. Taylor with time. Oh, finds a receiver, and that receiver has to pay a price. Aurelius A.J. Smith, and Osmond Taylor is right there to make him pay the price for that reception. If you're going to catch the ball, make him pay for it. Make him pay the price. Let him know, even if he catches the ball, 
let him know you're going to be it's going to be like that all day so great hit great catch great tackle that's football Osmond Taylor the team captain for the defense all conference player from the strong side linebacker position Trying for a bubble screen, and this one goes nowhere fast. A.J. Smith on the reception may have gotten one yard, but there is a flag. <laughs> you see Taylor right there. He's like, my neck. <laughs> my neck and my back. That was a song for a long time ago. There is no foul on the play. Fourth down. <laughs> And now they're going to go forward on four. And you know, in this situation here, you're too far out of the range for your field goal kicker. It's too, too close uh, to punt the ball. So this is a pretty good decision by Morehouse to go for it. So even if you don't get it, it kind of is uh, simulating a, a kickoff return. And they said no foul on that flag. They picked it up. Taylor trying to convert on fourth down, and this time he is brought down well short, and it was Twan Adams right there. Check that. Number one, it was Terrence Leatherwood there to make his first appearance in the game and make a big play to turn it over on down. Yeah, a name like Leatherwood. You better be playing defense. And Leatherwood name. brings the leather, huh? Brings the leather. That's a great name for a defender, a defense. Great call there by the defense in order to get that stop. So we got a knuckles and we got a level. All right, make sure you get social with Aspire. Connect on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at TV Aspire. And always on the website, aspire.tv. So you're active on Facebook and Twitter, all that stuff, Tyrone? Yes, I am. Pitch and catch incomplete. Could have been a huge gain. But that ball went in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Karam Puckett. Yeah, you know, actually they have a drill where they sometimes have um, a receiver doing receiver practice where they will wave in front of the receiver uh, for particular situations like this to try to get him to be familiar with distraction. And on that particular play right there, he was distracted, I believe, by a defensive guy waving his hand and actually lost uh, concentration on the football, lost focus, and you get it incomplete. And he's just a freshman out of Fairburn, Georgia. We can call that rookie mistake, but they paid a heavy price for it. Nice run right here. Good pitch and catch and positive yards by Phillip Brown. Good run by Brown. Keeps uh, Tuskegee uh, on the field. Gives him a good opportunity. Manageable third down. Uh, again, Tuskegee gets a first down, so it gives him opportunity to get four more downs. Uh, but this is what Tuskegee needs to do. They need to get their offense back. Get the, the, the momentum. Get some type of tempo going. Uh, the longer they have the ball and they don't do anything with it, then it's not good. So you need to get a score. They need to get a score in this drive. And this handoff is stopped immediately. Big hit by Kamari Jones Hunter. Hunter, we got a Hunter, we got a Leatherwood, we got Knuckles, uh, but this is a great defensive play. Shoots right through the play, is stopped right before it could even start. So uh, that's the way you hit, that's the way you finish, that's how you play defense. Rick Freeman's defense. Trying to do what they haven't done since 2011, and that's get a win here at the 82nd Annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic. Yeah, the last 13 games, I think, uh, uh, Tuskegee is 12, and 12 out of 13. Five, they've been five of the last five. Trying for a pitch and catch. Will they call it? No, they say it is incomplete. Intended for Chadwin Johnson. 
and, and, and that's always a tough throw. When you're a quarterback, you're rolling to your throwing side. The ball has a tendency to sail on you. And that is exactly what happened on that particular throw there. The quarterback rolling to his throwing side, throws it, the ball sails on him, and it ends up incomplete. Now third and long. If you're Tuskegee, Tyrone, what do you think they need to do now to convert? But Tuskegee, now, they do run screens. Again, I don't think that's what they're going to do here, but they have to go back and do what they do. Throw the ball, be patient. Ezell finds Ramsey. Ramsey with some room to run, able to get the first down, throwing the ball, just like you said, able to get it, and they move, move the chains. Well, it's kind of like Denny Green, uh, the old Minnesota Vikings quarterback, uh, coach. They are who they are. And Tuskegee, they pride themselves with throwing the football. Uh, so, again, they have the plays. They just have to allow their players, their players have to understand, be patient, let the routes develop. Quarterback, sit in the pocket and deliver a good ball. The offense will get back on pace. At midfield, and Ezell trying to bring his team back down by 10. Getting some pressure and incomplete. Intended for Kendall Calvin and Ezell. He is getting it. He has been on his back a lot this game. Yeah, anytime it's your quarterback uh, that's being picked up again, nobody likes to be hit. Be hit, but these quarterbacks, they definitely don't uh, like to get hit. But as a defense, this is what you want to do. Even if it is he gets the ball off, you want to be in position to at least take him to the ground. Uh, even though the ball was thrown, that hit last has a lasting effect on the quarterback and his mental uh, as far as going mentality going forward in the game. Ezell trying to find a man. He does and Ramsey, Ramsey, but cutting back, he lost about three yards trying to find an opening to move forward. Yeah, that again is basically you would call a rookie mistake. Uh, this guy, you catch the ball, you got to turn it up and get positive yards. You don't want to try to lose yards, but I understand what he was trying to do. He was trying to create a big play, but in trying to create that big play, he also created a big loss for the Golden Tigers. Peyton Ramsey is the grandson of the head coach, Willie Slater, and he's trying to help propel his team and grandfather's team back into this game as they trail by 10. Pitch and catch, able to get enough for the first down. Johnson on the reception. Again, this is what I think Tuskegee has to do to get that tempo back. Just get some short throws. Get the rhythm of the quarterback back down. Have your routes built in where there are deep routes and there are underneath routes. So that way the quarterback always has an option of a check down. Someone come across his face if the deeper route is not open. So again, they keep this type of format. The tempo of the offense will come back and they will find themselves in the end zone. And inside run for Phillip Brown, and he's able to get some positive yards. They're starting to get some momentum. Momentum is shifting in favor of Tuskegee. He's like, look, feed me some more, feed me some more. Yeah, tempo, anybody, no matter what sport you have played, tempo, tempo, tempo. Uh, if I'm playing basketball, if I got the sweet release and the ball is going in, feed it to me. You see the hands on the hip for the defenders from Morehouse. This is the longest they've been out all game on the field. Brown. Able to get some more positive yards. He's met by Gary Awkward. Yeah, and as you stated, as you stated, James, Tuskegee's offense hasn't been on the field as much as they have on this particular drive. And now, with the temperature, you know, it, it's still kind of warm out there. And defensive guys, they do get tired. And 
Uh, defenses are not built to for sustainable uh, drives. Offenses are built for longer duration. So uh, right now, Tuskegee has to take advantage of this tiredness. And inside run by Jacavian Goodlow. And he's able to get, oh, we call it two yards. So whether Tuskegee comes away with a field goal or a touchdown, you have to consider this a positive effect for the team's morale. But if they come up with nothing, then it's defeated. Yeah, you, you, you look at yourself and you say, we, we stayed on the field for nothing. Now a little bit of the mental starts to turn to anger. Ezell looking into the end zone, and he overthrows his intended receiver, Peyton Ramsey. So if we can get, if, if Tuskegee can, can, can get into the end zone, again, if they kick a field goal, they're only one touchdown out. Uh, if they get a touchdown, they're only one field goal out. But uh, these guys, this has been what they have needed. They have needed to see their offense do and contain and continue a sustainable drive. And right now, this looks like the old Tuskegee uh, Golden Tigers of old. Third down and nine. They need to get inside the 10 for first. Zell getting some pressure. Throws into the end zone and overthrows his intended receiver, Kendall Calvin. And the defense is celebrating because they know they're one down away to get in the ball back. Yeah, that particular play right there, the quarterback wanted to boot out to his left. Great pursuit, great contain by Morehouse, forces him to redirect, which only had one player that he could throw to there. Throws it up, kind of like a little short Hail Mary. Incomplete. Chalk that up as a victory for Morehouse. Hall is trying for a field goal. He is 0 for 3 on the year. He's missed from 49, 42, and 34. This one is about a 33-yarder. And Morehouse calls a timeout. He wants to try to make sure that they have everything going as far as Coach Freeman and his Morehouse Maroon Tigers as they lead 17 to 7 here in the third. Hey, it's me, your dry skin. I'm craving something we're missing. The Ceramides and Sarah V. And welcome back to the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic. Dalton Hall on for a 30 three-yard field goal attempt. It would be the first successful one of the year if he can complete the job. And at this point, you're Tuskegee. You've got to get this field goal. You had a long, sustainable drive. You don't want to come up empty. And it is wide right. Wide right and Morehouse defense holds. And for Dalton Hall, the player of the week special teams as a punter, but as a place kicker, he falls to 0 for 4, 17-7 now. Still your score, and Coach Freeman still not happy because he knows there's still a lot of football yet to be played. Yeah, again, you, as a Tuskegee uh, offense, you're sad. But Morehouse's defense, they've done what they've been doing all year. They've been getting to the quarterback. They've been making the quarterback make errant decisions. So today, these guys have played like they played all year, way up and above the offense of their competitors. Taylor into Frank Bailey. Bailey trying to effort his way back to the line of scrimmage. He may have gotten there before he met a host of yellow jerseys. Yeah, again, again, talk about that last drive by Tuskegee. This is where on the sideline, uh, if you pay attention to it, sometimes this is where you see the Gatorade Cup. Here's the hit the ground real hard because you're upset. You're like, you drove, you drove the ball the length of the field and you come up empty and defensively now we got to go out there. So this is where, again, the guys, the captains, the leaders have to move, come around and get the guys to say, hey, let's, let's, let's stay together, guys. Let's not separate. Taylor. Finds his favorite tight end, Edwards, for another first down for Morehouse. Ryan Edwards, the young man from Atlanta Mays High School, leading the way as a senior. 
Now, just as it deflates the defense for Tuskegee, it also gives Warhouse uh, offense more energy to come out and try to score because now again, mentally, Tuskegee defense is down a little bit. Bailey trying to find an opening and does, able to get one, possibly two yards before he's brought down. Again, give it to, I do definitely believe in running between the tackles. And uh, this has been a great, uh, Morehouse has got a lot of their yards between the tackles. So continue to run the ball between the tackles and you're going to pick up positive yards. And mixing in a few passes by Taylor, then they probably find themselves in the end zone. Bailey Jr. finds a hole, gets into Tuskegee territory, brought down, but not before he gets another first down. Thompson on the tackle, but Frank Bailey Jr., he's playing like he's a senior. Yeah, he's playing real good ball. Um, so continue to feed him between the tackles, as I stated, and mix in a little bit of passing here. But uh, Bailey, he's doing a great job so far every time he runs between the tackles. Movement on that line. Offside, defense. First down. Offsides on Tuskegee. Frustration starting to show for the Golden Tigers. Yeah, starting to show someone wants to try to make a play. Uh, I'm pretty sure they got a good dose from the coaches. Somebody has to go out here and make a play. But at the same time, you have to stay within the content of of the defense. You can't get outside of the guidelines of what the game plan is. Yes, you may need to modify it, but you got to stay within the parameters of the game plan because Tuskegee, uh, defensively, they understand that Morehouse is going to run what they have seen on film. We just have to settle down and get back to the game play and make some plays on defense. And Taylor just drops the handoff intended for Frank Bailey Jr. Looks like he was going to try to keep it. And the ball goes awry. And could it be fatigue for Taylor? No, I don't think it's fatigue. I think sometimes you basically, uh, whenever that fake uh, between the quarterback and the running back is done, uh, sometimes the elbow hits the football. Uh, the running back doesn't open his arm up. Uh, gap-wise enough for the quarterback to fake it, and that is what happens, a fumble. Bailey trying to find some room, and he doesn't go anywhere fast. Quickly wrapped up by DeVaris Thomas, playing one of the linebacker positions for Tuskegee. He had to make Bailey stop his foot, uh, his feet, and uh, he tried to redirect, and as a defensive guy, that's what you want want to make the running back have to stutter his steps. And if he can stutter his steps, then that allows the pursuit of the defense to get to him, which causes uh, low output in yardage. Third and long for Morehouse. Getting a lot of pressure. Thomas able to do a good job of corralling Taylor. And he pushed the ball and may have, they, are they going to call it a forward pass? Well, situations like this when quarterback breaks uh, in brace containment, gets on the outside, uh, then he tries to get rid of the ball to try to keep from losing yards. And they do throw a flag. And let's see what the official call will be. Attention and grounding. Offense. Number one. Loss of down to the spot of the foul. Fourth down. He was trying to do everything to, to keep from taking a loss on that. Yeah, everything except throw it to a receiver. And by him not having a receiver in that area, that's what they call intentional grounding. If there had been any type of receiver in that area, then they would not have probably called that intentional grounding. But you have to have a receiver in that vicinity. Gonzalez. End over end punt, and it will take a Morehouse bounce. Goes out of bounds at about the 13 yard line. 17 7 is your score. One minute left to play, one second left to play here in the third quarter. We'll be right back with more. Fade into 
and you see somebody zip lining across the Chattahoochee going from Phoenix City, Alabama to Columbus, Georgia. Make sure you stay social with Aspire. Connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and let us know. Are you going to be with Team James? No way I'll do it. Or Team Tyrone? Of course I'll take the zip line. Let us know through social media. As you see the Tuskegee dancers, now I'm just letting you know. I'll go with you, Tyrone. I'm just not going to get on the line. Gonna watch. Huh? I will be on the other side with the ambulance waiting for <laughs> No, no ambulance. <laughs> and this will be the last play of the third quarter. Almost a fumble. Brown spins, and then it's Johnson right there to bring him down. We end the third quarter. One more quarter to go. And it's so far been a lot of good defense by Morehouse, able to wrap up these L's as Tuskegee trails Morehouse 17 to 7. Take a look at the Morehouse band and their dancers. They come from Spelman College. 17-7 is your score as we start the fourth and final quarter. And some scores from around the SIAC. It is miles all over Central State, Langston all over Lane, and Mississippi College taking on Clark Atlanta up by seven early. And it's Albany State trailing Lincoln 10 to nine. And it was West Virginia State defeating Kentucky State. Let's go to the fourth quarter as Ezel's trying to help his team move out of the hole deep in their own territory. Ezel able to stay on his feet and get some positive yards enough for the first down. Jamarcus Ezel leading the Golden Tigers. Yeah, I think Jamarcus on that particular play, he was almost like he was looking for somewhere to, to fall down, but <laughs> he was losing his balance. Uh, but a great athletic play by him to keep Morehouse, uh, Albany, uh, Tuskegee, actually keeping them in position to keep the drive alive. So uh, give him credit for using his legs instead of his arm to give uh, Tuskegee at our first and 10. Kind of got, got me caught up with all the scores you started calling out. Did you show for that? I know. Pitch and catch. Oh, that one hits the ground incomplete. And Ezel pays the price on that one. And his receiver's trying to lobby for a reception. Lucky right there for the defense. Well, that's what you do uh, if you're a receiver. You always try to look like and make it like you caught the ball. Make it tough on the referees. But again, the quarterback takes a hit right there, goes down to the ground. You can kind of see, you know, they're not popping up as fast as he was before. So you can tell that these hits are beginning to take their toll on Jamarcus. He's been sacked numerous times, uh, three times by one person today. Yes, yeah, that word numerous that makes me kind of leery but just about just just with the hitting alone looking for ramsey finds him and he says no he was out of bounds and peyton ramsey is trying to lobby his case but the re referee was right there <laughs> yeah here we go we see a deep ball it looks like he might have stepped on the line as he caught it looks like a great call by the referee another angle here yeah, yeah oh, right yeah. there that around. left that right foot right there on the ground so that's a great call by the referee is, is it is it the mindset of a receiver to know where you are on the field because he could have stopped well, and works, tried to catch it it works hand in hand uh the quarterback uh the the the, the moral of the story, you actually, as a receiver, you want, on any deep ball, you want to leave a certain amount of room on the sideline. And we do have another quarterback that's getting ready to come on the field, number 17, Malcolm Vigil. He is an all-state performer in the state of Florida, played at Edison High School, and in one game he threw for over 400 yards and five touchdowns. So this is a player, according to Coach Slater, he can do a little bit of everything. And he did say if it comes to it, they'll throw the freshman in. Well, at this point, if you're Tuskegee, uh, you have to get some type of offense going. 
Uh, Nacho Marcus has done a great job. He's done uh, throwing a few good passes, and he's done a few good things with his legs. So the thing about this is, is you have a quarterback coming into the game. It's kind of like a pitcher. You know, I don't know if he's been on the sideline warming up, but in the Florida game, the fourth quarter, 14.05, he's missed three quarters of action. So it's going to be very important to see how quickly he can get into the flow and the tempo of the game. Will he come out and throw a couple of bad passes, or will he come out and throw a touchdown and get the ball into the end zone? He has played sparingly so far this season, only seen action in about two games. Vigil on his first play here in the 82nd Classic. He throws it in a little bit high, intended for Chadron Johnson. Good pass. Should have been caught. Well, again, you got a guy coming into the game that has not taken a snap. Uh, understanding the situation, uh, third and long. Uh, I probably would have left Jamarcus in there just for the simple fact of the third and long and bring uh, the new quarterback in uh, on the next series, start him out with a little bit of Deacon Duncan, let him get into the flow of the game. Uh, but uh, he throws the ball incomplete, Tuskegee's punt. Fair catch call by Vanover Jr. And he takes it at his own 28-yard line. That's where Morehouse will take over. Good punt by Dalton Hall. But Tuskegee trails Morehouse still here in the fourth, 17-7. Beautiful site of the National Infantry Museum, one of the many sites here in Columbus, Georgia, also home of Fort Benning. And next Saturday, it will be Bowie State taking on Virginia State. And that'll be next week right here on Aspire, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And the CIAA, make sure you catch all of your HBCU football action right here on Aspire, 2 p.m. Eastern. That is a rivalry game, Bowie State. Bulldogs taking on Virginia State Trojans, and you see the flags flying. Cloud still here, but no rain yet here in Columbus. Quick pick, pitch and catch for Morehouse's offense out to Amir Smith with the reception. Again, if you're Tuskegee's offense or coaches, the offensive players, defensive players, anybody within this institution, you still have to feel pretty good about where you are. You're only down two scores. Uh, so anything can happen at any time. Just like uh, Morehouse got the, the fumble and positioned themselves quickly to score. Tuskegee keep playing. The same thing can happen here. And interception. Looks like it went to the wrong guy. Will they call it a pick? Uh, looks like it's incomplete. Oh, that looked like it was a good one there by Par Marlon Parnell. Let's take another look. Again, Marlon has been around the ball all day today. Oh, defending, it, yeah, it did touch. Defending the long ball. Uh, almost had an interception here uh, earlier, and here he has another opportunity, but uh, the ball hit the ground a little too soon. But, um, again, things can happen just like that. So defensively, offensively, Tuskegee just has to continue to play. And for Morehouse, don't commit any plays that can hurt yourself. Getting pressure from the backside. Oh, trying to pitch it over to Bailey Jr. and incomplete. Getting some pressure from number nine, Kadarius Whitehead. And also Osmond Thompson is like, yes, we're trying to get off the field, players. Let's go. Yeah, they're definitely here. The, the, uh, pressure allows the quarterback to uh, change his trajectory of the ball. Uh, he had to position himself uh, even though a guy was open. He kind of led him a little too much and that's not basically what he wanted to do but Morehouse is punting. That's what Tuskegee wants. Gonzalez goes over the head of Petway and it will take a Morehouse bounce and down inside the 25-yard line down to about the 24. And one of the reasons why Malcolm Vigil is in is because Ezel, he's been abused by Morehouse's defense. Yeah, he has. And again, Morehouse come into the game, get into the quarterback, and it was no difference today. 
They will get into Tuskegee's quarterback, taking a lot of big hits. And again, those hits, they begin to take a toll on the mind and body of the quarterback. And looks like resurrected from, not the dead, but close to it, Ezell is back in at quarterback. Yeah, again, I, 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 I was displeased uh, with the situation of changing Jamarcus, but now I see why they did it. So it was great to see him back into the game. Ezell, and this time he is wrapped up. Oh, he gets the ball out to Lowe. Lowe has some room to run, gets enough for the first down and more. He is a home run hitting type of running back, and he's able to get some positive yards out of bounds at about the 48-yard line, but there is a flag on the field at the 43 of Tuskegee. Yeah, that's what you call trying to make something happen and making it happen. A great awareness. He knows he has an offensive guy right beside him. He's going down, tosses it to him, and gives low an opportunity to try to pick up and gain positive yards for Tuskegee. Holding. Offense, number 88. Ten-yard penalty. Take him down. Yeah, that basically pushes them back. Yeah, again, that, those are drive killers. They are, are momentum killers. Uh, just mentally, it does something to you when you get a big play offensively or defensively. If you get a big play interception, interception, a uh, uh, sack, and then all of a sudden there's a penalty uh, that wipes it out, it's kind of demoralizing uh, to see that happen. So let's see what Tuskegee is able to do uh, to rebound from this penalty. Is it like a domino effect? Would they come up to this play and do something in error, or would they overcome it and try to position themselves to get into this end zone, which they are running out of time? Now they want to make sure that they have everything correct as far as the spot and down. Trying to make sure they have the chains. And it'll be second down or will they call it first down he had enough for first down on the carry pushes him back 10 but now yes it'll be second and short Ezell looking for the first down has it and more has room on the wide side beyond midfield trying to outrun defenders gets down to the 20 and brought down inside the 20 at about the 14 yard line good keeper there by Jamarcus Ezell brings the fans up and they're happy great athletic ability great awareness the cutback is always going to open up and you're going to get big yardage Anytime you get a runner, whether it's a quarterback or a running back or wide receiver, whenever you see them cut back against the grain, so to speak, against the flow or the pursuit of the defense, usually it ends up as a big play, and that is what you saw right there, the cutback, big yardage. Now Tuskegee sees themselves in position to score a touchdown. And again, these guys, once they get here, they know what to do as far as putting it in the end zone. So let's see if they're able to keep that up. And Rich Freeman and the defense, they quickly call a timeout to try to see if they can catch their breath just like Jamar Ezell wants to catch his breath as they still trail 17 to seven right here on the spot. Driving the football is the Tuskegee Golden Tigers as they trail by 10 to Morehouse here at the 82nd Annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic. James Barrett along with Tyrone Poole, 1141 left to play in this one. And right now it's been Jamarcus Ezell who has propelled his team to a point to where they can try to close the gap against Morehouse. He has been the beacon of light for Tuskegee right now. Once again on a keeper, has some room to run, trying to get to the end zone, may have fallen a half a yard short, but enough for a first and goal for the Golden Tigers. Again, give it to your hot player. Right now, Jamarcus, he is the hot player for Tuskegee. And he positions him, the team right now to score a touchdown, which would bring them within a field goal. So right now, Tuskegee, as I said before, 
they know how to get here. If they can get here, they know how to get into the end zone. So uh, I'm looking for these guys to do what they normally do, score touchdowns. And ball on the ground. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah. That was uh, number 32, uh, Javon Brandon. Looks like that was Brandon. Yeah, looked like a little step on right there. Uh, quarterback, seen that many, many times where snap, the quarterback trying to get his feet, legs tangled up with the offensive lineman because they're trying to get their blocks. Fortunately, Tuskegee got the ball back. But they did lose some yards on that one. Pushes them back to about the three-yard line. And now Tuskegee calls a timeout. Coach Slater wants to know exactly if everybody's on the same page because they have not had a lot of opportunities in the red zone. And you're definitely right, James. You want to make sure if you got to take a timeout, take a timeout to make sure everybody is on point because the game is actually with 10:22 left in the game. This is a critical uh, scoring opportunity for Tuskegee. And if they can score a touchdown here, I think you will see, uh, as they say, the monkey, so to speak, gets off of their back and they can breathe a little bit. They can come up out of the water and breathe and, and make it a manageable game and get back to the game plan. And just to remind our Aspire viewers from the executive producers, G. Garvin and Isa Ray is the hottest cooking show on television. And this Tuesday night, celebrity chef Carla Hall joins host Seth and Leslie in the kitchen. See what's cooking up on an all-new season of Butter and Brown every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. right here on Aspire. And I learn a little bit every time I watch, and I like to cook. And cooking is good. And speaking of cooking, uh, again, we, we were looking at the, the, the Morehouse defensive lineman with their hands on their hips. I don't think I've seen a Tuskegee lineman with his hands on his hips. Phillip Brown on the carry, and that big push by the defensive front for Morehouse, hands on hip or not, they were able to get the push and get to Phillip Brown, leading the way Kamari Hunter and also uh, Trayvon Lucky. And that's how you know if your offensive line is getting tired. They may not put the hands on the hips, but if they cannot get that drive, then that's an indication that they are tired as well. So everybody shows their 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 tiredness in uh, different forms and different uh, visuals. Roshan or uh, uh, Roslin, excuse me, Romaine, number 73, the sophomore, stands at 6'5", 320. So when his leg hurts, it really hurts. Yeah, that's a big boy. And like I said, most offensive linemen, they are going to be real big. They're going to be bigger than your defensive linemen. But that's a supersized uh, offensive lineman there, 6'5". Third and goal, pitch out to Brown, trying to find some room to run, and does into the end zone. Touchdown to Tuskegee. Yeah, here Tuskegee comes back with the run. Uh, pitch it to the outside. Usually you have a great opportunity to get the ball into the end zone with a pitch because you actually get the defense spread and you create gaps and allow the, the running back to pick the gap that drives him into the end zone. And right there, Tuskegee goes with the pitch, gets into the end zone, trying to bring themselves within a field goal based off of this extra point. Point after attempt is good. Hall is perfect on the season for point after attempts. Timeout on the field. 17-14 is your score. Phillip Brown finds his way into the end zone and brings Tuskegee a little bit closer to Morehouse. During the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic, they honored the Mr. and Mrs. for Tuskegee. Mr. Tuskegee and Miss Tuskegee. And you see the Royal Court and at homecoming at any university. That's always the crowning moment for the individuals that are elected. Now, for, for me and you, Tyron, we were busy doing other things. Football. That is it. Hall. Oh. 
On the return is Morehouse trying to get beyond the 30-yard line. And they do. Good return there by Santo Dunn. Yeah, you know, these Tuskegee's and Morehouse games, always are close. You know, right now we got a great game, 14-17. Uh, last year's score was 28 to 19. So um, I'm looking for nothing less than great games every time these teams play one another. Again, playing in, in, in the 82nd Classic. So for 82 seasons, they've been going at it like this. Nice pitch and catch with some room to run. Good pitch and catch to Reese Knuckles. We That's haven't called guy. him in the second half, but That's he's finally guy. getting on it. Yep, that, that is our guy. We got Leatherwood, we got Knuckles. Pretty sure we went over the roster and called out everybody's names, then, then we can find some other great football names. Oh, yeah. Second and short. Morehouse right now trying to hold on to a three point lead with less than nine minutes to play. And that one was high for Vanover Jr. And incomplete. Yeah, the quarterback didn't have, did, didn't do his proper technique um, with that throw there. And also, you know, as a defensive player, uh, I'm looking at the game, I'm looking at the stance uh, of the offensive line, I'm looking at the position of the tight end. Uh, and on, on that particular play, the tight end had a good gap size between uh, himself and the uh, tackle which would alert me as a defensive player that this guy uh, is about to run a route or is some type of pass uh, formation. Give the Frank Bailey Jr. and he gets enough stretches out to get the first down and move the chain. Again, they motion the tight end across to try to get uh, a numbers game. A number of games mean, meaning they want to try to get more of their offensive guys on one side of the football so that they can outnumber the defensive guys and they run to the number side, the number of players that they have more of than Tuskegee. You know, that particular play, Morehouse was able to squeeze it through and get a first down. Inside again to Frank Bailey Jr. And he's able to get some more positive yards, hard running by the freshman. Yeah, on that particular play, he did get hit pretty good on the first play. Uh, the first defender coming in, making that initial tackle. But here is going to be very important for Morehouse to be able to run the ball and run the time off the clock as much as they can. You see the fans out there on the berm enjoying the game. Another inside run by Bailey Jr. He eludes one tackler, but then Osmond Thomas, along with Parnell, there to bring him down to make a third down situation for the Maroon Tigers. I am impressed by Frank Bailey Jr. He takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Yeah, he takes a licking and keeps on ticking. I'm pretty sure the ice tub and the ice rub and every, every other thing that they have to get the body ready for next week, he will be trying to use it because he's taking a few hits. He's also made some great runs. But like you said, I'm impressed with him as well. He's done a lot for Morehouse in this particular game. So the key going to be, can Morehouse just run the ball consistently, which I don't think is one of their strengths, but can they run the ball consistently and get some of that time off the clock? Third down for Morehouse and a keeper by Taylor. He has the first and more and slides down, able to get the first down. Very smart play by the quarterback. Yeah, whether it's the running back or the quarterback. If you can run the ball, you run the ball. Here, I think it was an intended draw. Quarterback wait until the middle opens up, takes off, gets the first down, gets down. Morehouse gets four more opportunities to run time off the clock. And here, Tuskegee defensively, this is where you have to dig in and let's get off the field right here. Inside to Bailey Jr. 
once again getting positive yards, about a four-yard gain, and he single-handedly is starting to wear down this defensive front of Tuskegee. Yeah, like I said earlier, it's all going to be predicated on the offensive play. The offensive play on both sides. And look at this block. Boom! Oh, helmet goes flying. That's what you call a D cleater. You see his cleats come up out there. Both cleats come off the ground. That's what you call a D cleater. So, hey, it's a game of football. That's why everybody can't play football. Those type of licks <laughs> right there make you not want to go out there on the field. You got to have your head on the swivel. You got to have your head on the swivel. <laughs> That's a good point. Second down. Give to Bailey. He's still able to get some positive yards. Now again, Tuskegee, if they can come off the field, got 530 left in the game, they have to get off the field this series here. They cannot allow Morehouse to get any points on this particular drive. Yeah, they may use up some time on the clock, but they cannot give them points. This is a big third down for Tuskegee. Big third down. Morehouse is going to go with five wide. Taylor getting some pressure. He eludes one defender, but not the other. A huge play for the Golden Tiger defense. Leading the way, number nine, Kendarius Whitehead, the transfer from Georgia Tech. Again, the defensive guys, they knew the, they knew what the what was ahead of them. They knew what they were looking at. They had to get out the field. Came with a four-man rush. The four-man rush got there. This is very good for Tuskegee. Gives them an opportunity to get the ball back to their offense. And I'm pretty sure the coach is very happy about that. Gonzalez to punt for Morehouse. Bowen's back. And this is a high snap. He's got to get the ball and do something with it. And he does kick it. That was an incredible play by Gonzalez, but an even better play by the special team for Tuskegee. Able to corral that ball and give their offense the best field position that they've had all afternoon long. Yeah, early in the game, we saw the ball go over the quarterback head. Here, we see a missed snap and catch by the punter. He's trying to use a rugby style to try to get the ball out. But again, turnovers. Tuskegee now finds themselves with a lot of energy and momentum on their side. So. And he's talking to his long snapper, trying to keep him positive because he knows, hey, we may need you again. They got four minutes left to play in this ball game. Yeah, again, situations happen during games. You don't know which play is going to be the play that uh, will look, be looked back on and say that if that play had not. More positive yards, not bad for Phillip Brown. He says, keep feeding me. He's already had a touchdown this half. He says he wants some more. Yeah, great run. Tuskegee now has the momentum. You can just tell off this play right here, the yardage that they're gaining. You just see a different mentality on their offense right now. They're really feeling. Severe weather can cost you thousands in repairs, and driving wind and rain can destroy your home. Give to Brown again, and this time he is upended. Trayvon Lucky able to get in there and get the trip, and now we have a player down for Morehouse. Now, the only thing about being in this position of the football field, uh, you can't stretch the field because the end zone now becomes the defensive guy's best friend. So this is usually where you see drives bogged down because of the field has now been shrunk. So... It's very vital that uh, Tuskegee come up with some type of scheme to get the ball into the end zone. And as for Morehouse, they have to be able to get out the field and limit Tuskegee to a field goal. And you see that it is Kamari Jones Hunter who is down, and he's able to get it. looks like it may be his hand. If it's, if it's his hand, then that's good because you know he'll return. And uh, at this part of the game, you want as many healthy bodies as you can. 
I'm pretty sure all the guys looking at the defensive linemen, uh, the hands on the hips. But again, this is an important series for Morehouse and Tuskegee. Second and 10. Getting some pressure. Looking in the end zone for Brown. He catches it, but they say no, he's out of bounds. Should have been a touchdown, but he was out of bounds. That ball let him out of bounds. Yeah, again, the quarterback has to set his feet. Set his feet, good throw. He led him a little bit to the outside. Incomplete, as you can see. But again, plays are there. And there was a penalty called against Tuskegee. Moves them back. Ten yards. Looks like it was a hold. Two fifty-one left to play in this game. We've seen Morehouse jump out to a lead, and now you're starting to hear the fans jumping around. And the long snapper there for Morehouse, he is really beside himself because it was his high snap that caused Tuskegee to have their best field position of the game. But now, after a penalty but on the Golden Tigers, they're looking at second down and 22. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you're the snapper, you're like, yes, <laughs> that's what you want to see Tuskegee back up. Interception by Morehouse. Interception by the house. Cameron Miller with the big play. Great play by Miller. And Comes the long snapper is play. relieved. He's relieved. Very relieved. I'm pretty sure players going over there telling him, see, I told you, don't worry about it. But again, quarterback trying to throw the post. Great play. Uh, Miller jumps in front of the ball, picks it off. Morehouse has the ball, wiping their forehead because they were sweating bullets before that particular interception. And during the return, personal foul, tripping, number eight of the passing team. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. Tripping on Tuskegee. So an extra 15 will go in favor. They're going forward. It'll be in favor of Morehouse, they get an extra 15 out of that one. Yeah, I see right there, you see it deliberately see uh, the leg out there. So that was a great call by the referee. Now, now explain that. Now, this is football. This is full contact. But tripping is not something that you can do, right? No, tripping, that's deliberate. You, you don't, you can't trip anyone. That's just like chop blocking. It, it, that's a deliberate act, and uh, that's a deliberate foul. So, uh, that's a great call by the officials. Now, again, Tuskegee is not out of this out of this thing. So if they can get a three and out here, they still position themselves to get back into this game and tired of winning. Frank Bailey Jr. trying to put it to bed, and he gets some positive yards, and the clock will continue to run. And as far as timeouts, not a lot for Tuskegee. Remember, they called a lot of early timeouts in this half to try to get their team on the right pace to close the gap. And now that may have been their undoing. Well, really, they have about, they, they have literally, it shows two timeouts, but literally they have uh, three timeouts. They have a two-minute warning, and then they're going to have the actual two timeouts. So really, they got uh, three timeouts. And Tuskegee, uh, Morehouse, they now looking at second down. So Tuskegee can stop the clock three times and still get the ball back with enough time to do something with it. Second down. Helmet is lost by one of the players that have to come off the field. And another positive yard by Frank Bailey Jr. And make sure you tune in next Saturday. The Bowie State Bulldogs and the Virginia State Trojans go head to head. It's a game you don't want to miss. Next Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern, right here on Aspire. And the Morehouse Band is eager to play that celebratory music because for years they've just been playing the alma mater somberly in this game. It's a big play here for Tuskegee. Uh, if Morehouse doesn't get positive yards, get a first down, call a timeout, and they position themselves to get this ball back. So this is a big play for the offense. If they get a first down, the game is over. 
Bailey. He eludes one defender, but is met by three others and does not get back to the 35-yard line. He loses a couple on that one. I think if you're Tuskegee here, you call your timeout. They do. Stop the clock. And anything can happen right here. They still punt the ball. Yeah, this is where you talk to your special team guys. You talk to your punt returner. You tell him to catch the ball if all possible and get as much as he can. You get your punt return team and you tell them, remind them of their responsibilities. And you can get a big punt return here. And again, Tuskegee can put to position themselves to win this game. You see the hardware there, the trophies for most valuable player, and also the team trophy for the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic. And you know what? I know Coach Freeman would love to hold that trophy because it's been a long time. It's been in Coach Slater's hands more often than not. Yeah, any time you win 13 of the 12 of the last 13 in the last five straight, then yes. Low snap, good kick, and gets over the return man's head. He will have to take it all the way back at his own 21, and he's brought down at the 30 with one minute, nine seconds left to play in this one, and Morehouse is a little bit over 60 seconds away from celebrating, and you can see Gonzalez. Let's see on the snap. It was a low snap. Oh, he may have gotten away with one because that knee was down. Yeah, it was down. He may have gotten away with one on that one, and you can see he's hyping it up. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> this, he is an energetic punter. Yes, he is. This is a big series here, a play calling for Tuskegee. They really need to come up with a first big play here, something to at least get the momentum of the team going. Ezel, and the ball is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Looks like that was Kamari Jones-Hunter there on the deflection. Now, as a defense, you're telling yourselves, hey, guys, three more plays. Give it all you got. Three plays. So you're going to see the rush of the defensive line get to the quarterback. And if you can't get to the quarterback, you always talk, put your hands up. So great coaching right there by that young defensive player. You can't get to the quarterback, put your hands up. And that's exactly what he did. Got his hands up, was able to tip the ball. Second and 10. But again, what that does is stops the clock, that uh, incomplete pass. Ah, uh, flag on the play and throwing long and incomplete. But hold on, there was a flag. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, or down. So they'll take the five, which will still bring up a third and five for Coach Freeman's defense to defend and for Tuskegee to see if they can convert with 56 seconds left to play. Again, let's remind ourselves, all they have to do is get into field goal range. Uh, they don't have to score a touchdown. So, um, again, they have four downs. So this is not your typical third down and then we punt it. They only have 56 seconds left. So they're going to, they have two more downs to try to get five yards. Ezel. Oh, he finds Ramsey and in and out of the hands of Ramsey. It was in some traffic, but he was not able to bring it in. Yeah, again, they want to go with the short pass, which is a great call, slant, quick game. to try to pick up the five yards. But again, the offensive guys, they have to keep each other calm. The quarterback, really, Jamarcus, he is going to be the one that determines whether or not Tuskegee is able to advance this ball down the field. His play from the quarterback position, being patient. If the first read is not there, be patient. Try to find the second read. But somebody is open. Third down five. Got some pressure from the backside. He's trying to run, gets enough to get to the first down. 46 seconds left to play. 
Yeah, this is where they need to get back up to the line of scrimmage. Uh, spike the ball, kill the clock. Do not let the ball, let the clock run. This is where you got to get into your sense of urgency here for Tuskegee. They're wasting a lot of time on the clock. And he's going to throw it. And he finds Ramsey, his receiver. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 27.8 seconds left. First down into Morehouse territory. Now, again, if you're Morehouse, you want to defend the sideline. Any type of defensive play, defensive call that you have, this is what you want to call to defend the sideline. You want Tuskegee to throw the ball in the middle of the field. But at the same time, you don't want to give them a lot of yardage, big plays. Timeout called by Morehouse. And if you're Morehouse defense right now, are you still in prevent? Or do you gamble and try to go after him to really send him back? Well, I think you continue to stay with your defensive uh, plays that you have uh, instituted for this game plan. Uh, there's always several ways that defenses go into a game. And I'm pretty sure Coach Freeman, as we're looking at, he has talked to his defense. They scouted. You have a two-minute offense, and basically what you see right here is what's called a two-minute offense. Basically, the offense is rushing. They're trying to get plays off as many plays as they can. And defensively, they practice the same thing, the two-minute defense. So um, they are going to call their plays based off of what their formations are for Tuskegee. But you've got to continue to play pressure. You've got to continue to play like you play. You cannot go into a prevent right here. And you see Hall, he has not made a field goal all season, 0 for 4. Now you talk about pressure on a kicker. Uh, I'm pretty sure they want to try to get, Coach Slater wants to try to get the ball as close to this goal post as he can. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Tuskegee try a deep pass within a couple of plays of this series. Ezell getting some pressure, and he takes a big hit and throws it out of bounds, and Ezell is down, and he was walloped by Trayvon Lucky, and you're not lucky when you see a big 99 coming at you like a freight train, and Ezell is just trying to stay up. Yeah, again here, quarterback, good pressure by Tuskegee. Good hit on the quarterback. He really felt that one, but give the quarterback credit. He Jamarcus did the right thing, throw the ball away. Gives Tuskegee still an opportunity to tie this game or win it. Second and 10. We have been entertained this afternoon here in Columbus and looking for a fantastic finish. Once again, pressure behind his intended receiver, Ramsey. And Ezell is like, okay, this is this is a little bit too much. I'm just getting abused. Yeah, anytime you're gonna allow the defensive line just to take a free uh, crack at your quarterback, uh, that's not that's that's never good. Uh, the play calling, uh, you would think uh, they would mix in a few little screens here and there, uh, something safe, uh, but they are, of course, with the time remaining on the clock, uh, now it's third down and 10. Their routes have to be longer. And uh, they also, if you notice, on that last particular play, they're trying to do what is called yards after the catch. They're trying to get the ball into the receiver's hands as they're running the routes. And let's see what the official call is. Play a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Delay a game. Yeah, again, this just adds a little bit more pressure on, on Tuskegee's offense. Uh, looked like everything was working in their favor. And still, yet, yeah, it's still uh, a chance uh, with 17 seconds. Uh, Anything can happen. They got one timeout. That's the most important thing. They have a timeout. So they still can throw the ball over the middle. So it's not necessarily uh, uh, important that they try to get sideline routes. They can't throw the ball over the middle. Ezell throwing a home run ball, and it's a reception. Catch is made. Huge play by Chadron Johnson. 
And now they're running out of time because once they spot the ball, they got to start the clock. But they do have a timeout if they want to go ahead and call a timeout. He can spike it. It's a first down. And they do spike it with 5.4 seconds left. Chadron Johnson with a great catch, well defended, and he's able to come up with it. Yeah, again, again, like I said, it's never over until it's over. Here, uh, Jamarcus just lets it go. The receiver gets behind the DB, comes up with a great catch, puts Tuskegee in position to tie this game up. Could we see overtime due to the great catch by that young man right there? It's up to Dalton Hall. He's already missed a 34-yarder today. And for the season, he's missed from 49, 42, and 34. Kick is up. And it's good. For the first time this season, Dalton Hall connects on a field goal, a chip shot. And now we are all tied up at 17, and you know what that means. Over time. Over time. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at all the fans, and some of them had their bags packed, and now I'm pretty sure they're going to put their bags in their seat, trying to get their seat back. Ezell with the long pass to Chadron Johnson, and a great catch. Yeah, great catch again. Defensive back lets the receiver get, get behind him. In a situation like that, you got to get back. You know they got to throw the ball deep. And for the first time this season, Dalton Hall with a field goal that goes through the uprights. And now the Tuskegee faithful are saying, uh-oh, wait one minute. We're yeah. not going to let Morehouse walk out of this place with a victory oh so easy. Yeah, the energy level is back high. So um, it goes back to 0-0. Zero, zero. Even though it's 17-17, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, each team going to get an opportunity uh, with the ball. And um, this is where you go look for your snicker bar. This is where you go look for your Gatorade, get the sugar. Let's get the energy level back up. Because now Freeman, who Coach Freeman, who was looking at an opportunity to take that trophy home, now he got to be thinking to himself, what must I do to take that trophy home? Got to fight a little harder. Got to put a little bit more in the tank. Now the captains, Osmond Thompson and Kevon Taylor will go to midfield for the coin toss. Gonna see who's gonna win it. Got a happy Osmond Thompson. Let's see what their official call is. So Morehouse will be on offense first, and it'll be Tuskegee on defense. And there is the hero so far, Dalton Hall. He is a All-SIAC Special Teams Player of the Week for four weeks as a punter. But now his nemesis is off of him, which was field goals. He was 0 for 4 before the kick that went through to propel this game into overtime. Yeah, let's give Jamarcus uh, some credit as well. He's taken a beat in today. He stayed in there. Uh, and uh, he had gone out earlier in the fourth quarter, but came back, and he's come back. And he's actually put his team in position to win this 82nd Classic between Tuskegee and Morehouse. So he's played like a champion quarterback today. And he's dapping up his offensive line, but now it's time for Morehouse. Can they answer the bell and get a score? Give the Frank Bailey Jr. coming to the near side and knocked out of bounds. May have gained a half a yard. 
Yeah, that's a great, great defensive uh, play by Tuskegee. Uh, the quarterback trying to get to the outside, the running back trying to get to the outside. Thompson holds his leverage. Number five holds his leverage. Doesn't allow the running back to get to the outside. Uh, everybody had their responsibility in that particular defense. And as you see the results, Morehouse did not get any positive yardage. Taylor, nice pitch and catch to Vanover Jr. Able to get some positive yards, maybe two yards short of the first. What makes that play so tough is you have someone going down the sideline and then you have a guy that hooks up. The quarterback rolls out, so you got to respect the quarterback ability to roll out to that side. You got to contain, but then you got to worry about the deep route and then you have a guy just sitting, so to speak, in a dead zone. So the quarterback has uh, two reads. Uh, he can basically run the ball or throw the ball. He has two receivers, one that's a primary and one is a dump off. So that's a tough play to defend uh, defensively. Third and short. Pitch and catch again. Reception made enough for the first down. Santo Dunn on the reception. Again, they come back with the same concept. You got someone going to the flats and you got someone going deep. Actually, they call that basically like a 9-7-3, so to speak. You got a guy going to the flat, you got a guy going vertical, and then you got a guy running an intermediate route. And the quarterback threw it to the right person, the short route, let him catch it and get upfield. So it's very tough to defend as a defense. Give to Bailey Jr. He breaks the line of scrimmage, may have gained one, possibly two yards. And here you see Morehouse, they're just going to try to grind, grind it out. Uh, they came with two passes. Now they want to come back with a run, kind of allow the receivers to catch their breath, give it to the running back. But I would expect them to come back with another pass on this particular play here. How about Ryan Edwards, the tight end? That's been his favorite receiver so far this game. Do you go for your tight end right now? But at this, you go where you, 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 you have a good mismatch and if the mismatch is uh, the tight end versus a safety or a linebacker you feel comfortable with that then you position the ball to get to your tight end but if not you have to go and basically give and take what the defense is giving you if they give you the flats take the flats and Warhouse calls a timeout they want to really look at it as second and eight and we'll be back for the resounding ending of the first drive in overtime for Morehouse right here on a spot. It's Rich Freeman has not counted his pennies yet. This win has not been deposited in the account. Overtime tied up at 17. James Red along with Tyrone Poole at the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic for 82 years. These two institutions have played here in Columbus, Georgia. Now, second down and eight Call it second and goal. Has to be a big stop by Tuskegee here. Ah, you don't want to move. That is what you don't want by Morehouse. You don't want to go backward. And their offensive line. You know you want that one back. Leo Humphrey. And in his, in his step, going backward, you know that that was going to actually be a pass play. If he steps going forward and they throw the flag, uh, you know it's going to be a running play. Mm -hmm. Now, I think a good play in this position here would be a screen, uh, some type of screen to the running back, a middle screen or a screen left or right. It's a safe play. You can throw it in the ground if it's not there. That is what you did not want. Interception, Tuskegee. Huge play by the Golden Tigers. And Jonah McCutcheon with the play. Here, Jonah just reached the quarterback. Full flow away, one receiver to the backside. He throws it. Jonah reads the quarterback eyes, steps in front of it. Morehouse, ineffective on their opportunity to score. 
gives it to Tuskegee, and if they kick a field goal or score a touchdown here, Tuskegee wins this game. Not bad for the 6'2", 186-pound free safety. He was Johnny on the spot. Right place at the right time. There you go. And now can the offense answer the bell since the defense is stopped, and can Morehouse defense stop Tuskegee's offense that has found new life? Brown sheds one tackler, and this time he is able to be brought down, but not before he gains about three yards. Philip Brown, not necessarily known as a fullback, but the position that they were scheduled for him to play was the fullback position, but what they did was drop brought in Goodlow at the fullback and moved him over to the running back position, more sturdier runner than Hodrick Lowe. Well, that just says a lot about his athletic ability and what the coaches think of this guy. So anytime you can play multiple positions and do multiple things for your team, it just makes you that more valuable. So uh, we're continuing to see what he does to keep this Tuskegee offense going. Brown. Trying to find some room and does inside the 10 down to the five and stretches. And he may have been about a half a yard short of the goal line. And he says, keep feeding me. I'm hungry. Keep feeding me the ball. Feed me, Seymour. Feed me. Yeah, that when you get when you get opportunity like this, this guy, he's been showing it all day. You've been seeing his mannerism. He wants the ball. And when he gets it, this is what he does with it. He almost scores right here, and I'm pretty sure this play coming up, they're going to give him the ball. Kind of like Michael Jordan or kind of like Steph Curry. You're going to give the ball to your go-to guy in crunch time. And you think right they now, may have discovered a go-to guy. guy in Phillip Brown? I think they found someone that's going to wake up their offense. So I think you're going to see him next week. He's going to be at that same position because it's all about tempo. It's all about consistency. I like his energy. Timeout called by Tuskegee, and he does have a lot of energy. The freshman from Bessemer, Alabama, the suburb of Birmingham, and he is like, hey, I want this. And that's what you want. You want guys on the field that people feed off of them, the teammates. You see how everybody's coming towards him? He has that energy right now, and everyone is feeding off of him. And that energy wasn't there for the first three quarters of the game. It wasn't there, but you saw little bits of the pieces, spurts of it. And now Tuskegee really feels an opportunity that they have positioned themselves to win this game. They fought back. They stayed with the game plan. Uh, Coach Slater, I'm pretty sure, has instilled in these guys, hey, we may be down, but we're never out. And we're always one play away. And... Right now, Tuskegee is one play away from winning this game. Now, let's flip it. Let's look at the Maroon Tigers. What do you do now? Can this be a, a statement play right here for their defense if they can stop them, uh, try here, to contain them? Here, you got to sell out. You got to blitz. You know they're going to run the ball. You got to sell out. You, any blitz that you have that is on your card, you throw that at Morehouse. You throw that at Tuskegee, Morehouse throws their uh, zone, whatever blitz they want to come with, but they have to put pressure and every gap has to be accounted for. Every man on Morehouse's defense has to play bigger than what they are right now. Trying to sneak it in and let's see what the official call is. Score! Touchdown, Golden Tigers in the overtime. And for Morehouse, a loss that was almost a win. And for the Golden Tigers, it's a win that some people say it should have been a loss. Yeah, but you know, that's how the game is played. Sometimes lose the games that you were supposed to won or should have won, and you win games you should have lost. Uh, this game here, uh, you see right here the quarterback keeper. This was probably the play that everybody knew in the stadium that they were going to go with, the quarterback sneak. Uh, why take a chance to hand it off in the backfield? Let your offensive line push against that defensive line and see who is the strongest. So that's a high percentage call right there with the quarterback sneak. 
gets it over, and now he's being carried off the field. He's had a very great day. Jamarcus has had an awesome day. So I'm pretty sure they're going to carry him all the way back to the college and put him in bed in his dormitory on their shoulders. And you can see the emotion coming from this young man, the fact that he was hit over and over and over again, had to leave the game, but still found a way with the help of his teammates to pull off another victory here at the 82nd annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic. Regardless if it's a big school or a small school, I can say point blank, this was a very entertaining game. Yeah. When they say leave it on the field, that is what you saw when the camera was on Jamarcus. He left it on the field. He left it on the field. And uh, it's a great victory for Tuskegee as a demoralizing loss for uh, Morehouse. Uh, but still yet, uh, these guys walk off the field safe. Uh, they walk off as they came on. Uh, but unfortunately, someone had to win and someone had to lose. And for Jamarcus Ezell, he's been battling injuries. He's been battling people trying to take his spot. But overall, this young man led his team to what some would say is a miraculous 23 to 17 victory. And Dalton Hall, without him, without his foot, his first field goal of the season, none of this would have been possible. Wouldn't have been possible. So now Tuskegee goes back and Morehouse has to wait until next year. So now six straight victories for Tuskegee. And now Coach Slater has won this classic between Tuskegee and Morehouse 13 out of the last 14 times. A lot of emotion coming from that young man. In every football game, it seems as though it's a, a semblance of life. You have your ups and your downs. Yeah, you have your peaks and your valleys. You have your ups and, and your downs. And it's all about how you handle your breaking points. And there were plenty of breaking points where Tuskegee, uh, Jamarcus, you see the tears of joy there. Uh, pretty sure it's the tears of pain as well as some of the memories of the hits. But that comes apart. That's part of the game. Uh, everybody played a role from the kicker all the way down to the guy who. From A.J. McClung Stadium in Columbus, Georgia, thank you for joining us and for everyone here. Thank you.